Hello, hello, hello. This is attorney Mike Gravel coming to you from Breckenridge, Colorado. I've got Flamingo number three right here. How are you doing? Good. She survived the mountain today. Barely. <laughs> you did, Ski school was good. You did well. You did well. There, there was a face plant. <laughs> or two. On the same mountain. There was an incident where I, I said, do you have your skis? And she said, well, I got one of them. <laughs> I lost a stick. <laughs> So there, there we go. We've got we've got a wild hearing today. It's a long one. Let me go. Number three might take a nap, read a book. I don't know. I don't know. Let's get this party started, shall we? Yep. Do it. Hello, 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 and welcome back to Law Talk with Mike. All right, we got um, Miss McLaw and, and Mr. Spitzman. All right, and the burden of proof in this situation is on uh, uh, Brittany Edney. And so, Miss McLaw. Good evening, Your Honor. Um, to give you a little bit of background, would, would the court like just some brief opening? Okay, warning, this is long. The beginning, I started out at 1.25 speed, but it's not bad. It it, it goes well. It 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 it, it's, it takes a while, but it gets hot, 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 as, as I put in my thumbnail. Sure. Brief. Yes, Your Honor. Um, Your Honor, these uh, parties are neighbors, um, which is one of the reasons why uh, my client didn't um, apply for a family violence protective order because she wouldn't have, um, under the statute, uh, they didn't have that kind of a relationship. There was a stalking petition that was filed. The incident. Um, in let, me, let me let me just give, let me get some let me get some understanding for a couple of things, Mr. McGraw. Hold on. Yes, sir. There are some people that are on here that are not actually um, as as accused or as a uh, complainant on here. I see Rod's iPad. Rod, who are you here for? He's um, here for this case, Your Honor. Okay. He's our witness. Okay. Dr. And, Roderick Gibbons. Okay. And then Stephen West, who are you here for? He's our witness, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Yes, Your Honor. On September the 23rd, 2023, the evidence will show that Dr. Roderick Givens was hosting a little get-together at his home. My client, Brittany Edney, and her husband, Peter Wang, were there on the porch with Dr. Givens when Mr. Byrne and his fiance Nicole Fraser, arrived. The evidence will show, Your Honor, that Mr. Byrne uh, addressed my client, Brittany Edney, who was sitting on a couch far away from him. In fact, furthest away from him. When my client did not respond to him, he continued to engage with my client um, to the point that Mr. Byrne indicated that if my client referred to his fiance as a bitch again, that he would strike her. My client stood up. Dr. Roger Givens was in, physically in between. <coughs> Dr. Givens will testify, Your Honor, that it happened very quickly that my client never raised her hand, didn't move in any aggressive way other than to stand up because Mr. Byrne was standing over her. He then punched her in the face. And then with his other hand, he was holding a bourbon bottle. He then swung the bottle and hit her in the arm. Mr. Wang then stood up after he saw his uh, wife be violently assaulted by Mr. Byrne. Um, Mr. Byrne grabs a hold of my client's arm. They end up on the floor. My client is on the bottom. Mr. Byrne is on top of her and he is choking Mr. Wang and Dr. Givens is, is observing this entire situation. The evidence will show, Your Honor, that Mr. Byrne has told differing stories about this matter, so has his fiance, and one of them is that my client raised her hand to strike Mr. Byrne, but Dr. Givens was there, said it didn't happen. Um, Mr. Byrne then, Your Honor, um, after striking my client and he's choking Mr. Wang, there's, they break up. There's a, other people come. They break up. What's happening? Mr. Stephen West is a member of good standing with the State Bar of Georgia. He's an attorney, Your Honor. He was there that night. While he didn't see the altercation itself, he did speak with Mr. Byrne, who made an admission that he struck my client, that he hit her. Um, you heard that right. We're talking about Wang choking here. Um, you'll hear, and in, in, uh, Mr. Byrne testified at the stalking petition. He testified he never hit my client, but you're going to yes, hear Your Honor, uh, that's, yeah, that's Ms. not going to be evidence. That's argument. Yeah. Yeah. So no, do you have that? You have that stocking petition transcript? I I can double check, Your Honor. We had uh, paid for it, and I thought it had come in, but I'd have to double check that. Yeah. But we we have ordered it, Your Honor. Um, 
Following um, this incident, Your Honor, my client uh, did uh, contact law enforcement. Law enforcement never came and interviewed my client that night. Um, she contacted law enforcement first thing the next day. Law enforcement did what they often do in these situations, which is, okay, we'll take a police report and you can come and file whatever it is you need to file. And that's exactly what my client has done. It was only after my client filed for the warrant application um, and filed a stalking petition that Mr. Byrne then filed his. Um, in addition to this stalking petition, or I'm sorry, the warrant application, Mr. Byrne and his fiance filed a stalking petition. Section on irrelevance, whether or not an act of violence was committed is solely at the, at the specific to that evening. It has nothing to do with what they did after the fact. Yeah, kind of stick to what we got going on that you allege in this particular uh, application, okay? Yes, Your Honor. Um, that will be the evidence of this case, and at the at the conclusion of this matter, Your Honor, we will be asking you to issue a warrant and a bond, and that Mr. Byrne undergo psychiatric, psychological testing, that he be required to stay away from my client at least uh, 500 feet, and that he undergo a bad orders intervention program. Okay, that's not going to, it's not family violence, so. No, Your Honor, it's not, but I believe as a part of a bond condition, he can be required to undergo. We're not going to do that, we don't do that, unless it's, unless it's family violence. Oh, yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right, go ahead, Mr. Pizzo. Judge, I'll be, I'll be much briefer. Um, quickly, Your Honor, this stems from an altercation that occurred back on September 23rd. Uh, Mr. Byrne and Ms. Edney um, and Ms. Frazier and Mr. White used to be really good friends. They traveled the world together. Um, evidence shows that they kind of fizzled out. The relationship just kind of stopped. There was no incident that caused them to no longer speak or something, nothing of that nature. So for about a year plus, they never saw one another. Uh, Mr. Byrne and his fiance, Ms. Frazier, were invited over to Dr. Gibbons' home. They had no knowledge Ms. Edney would be there. They appeared. Mr. Byrne brought a bottle of bourbon as a gift from Mr. Giv Dr. Givens for the invite. They show up. There's exchange of words that occur. Um, Ms. Edney stands up. She goes to raise her hand to strike Ms. Frazier. Mr. Byrne pushes Ms. Edney away. Mr. Wang uh, jumps in. Dr. Givens, who is in the middle, um, doesn't witness anything other than the fact that he's between the two of them. Everyone falls to the ground. Um, and while Mr. Byrne is on the ground, he is being violently assaulted. Ms. Hedy bites him on the head. There's going to be photo evidence of that particular um, bite. I can't even follow this. I can't even follow this. Everybody Wang Chung tonight. Um, and he is also hit while he is on the ground. You'll see evidence of that. There'll be photo evidence, uh, and there'll be evidence of the bite. Um, he went home. He called the police. He reported to Cab County Police. They showed up, they interviewed him extensively. We're gonna provide you with the police report and the audio of that exchange, Judge. Uh, Ms. Edney waits till the next day. She calls the police. The police interview her and Mr. Wang. There's a video of that interview. Um, police officer specifically notes on that video that he sees no physical injury and he notes it in his police report of any damage or injuries to her head. The police are called again, Judge. The police interview Dr. Gibbons, Ms. Edney, and Mr. Wang again. And after a thorough investigation that includes, I believe a total of three police reports, three dash and body cams, three separate phone calls, interviewing of all the witnesses that you're going to hear from today, Your Honor. After all of that, they determined that they could not find out who the initial aggressor is, who's the at-part fault party, and they know that Ms. Edney's delay in calling the police was also a contributing factor. Because of all that, Judge, we're going to ask that you find a no-witness warrants be issued tonight. We're not looking for blood. We're not looking for anything. We think that the evidence is going to support, Judge, that you're either going to find that this was an incident where there was, um, there was mutual combat neither of which party participated in voluntarily, but there was a fight that broke out. And while Mr. Byrne is on the ground, he is getting bit in the head by Miss Edney. That's an assault. That's a battery. That's an unwanted touching. And so while some parties may have an immunity motion that should be argued later, what the evidence is going to show is that, Judge, you're going to be stuck with uh, send everyone to jail or send no one to jail. And what we're proposing to this honorable court is to send no one to jail because it's, it's, it has been litigated, it has been um, investigated, and now we're here to relitigate. So. Um, we don't think you just issue no warrants. It just all needs to come to an end. Um, that's all that I have, Judge. It all needs to come to an end. I, 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 truer words have never been spoken. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. We're gonna come back to Linton and Williams again. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> and um, and for, unfortunately, Mr. McLaw and Mr. Um, Spitzman, I'm gonna probably break break in once I do receive that information. Okay. So um, try to get that case out of the way. Excuse me, before, before we go dive deep, um, just want to make sure that I have everything I need to send to the judge as far as evidence goes. Mm -hmm. I do have email. Oh, we're diving deep. From Mr. Byrne with uh, four images, and that has been forwarded. Is there anything else that I'm supposed to have as far as evidence from either party? 
We sent over 11 exhibits today. I know that the CAD's filtration system is unbelievable. Um, so we, we tried to use the same process that we did with the TPO, so we zipped and sent. Okay. Um, let's see, did it come from your email? It would have, it would have come from robin at hsflawfirm.com. Okay, that'll help. Let's see. Is it R-O-B-Y-N? R-O-B-I-N at hsf, Hawkins, Spiesman, Forest, HSF, law firm com. I think it's so All right, let me, let, me <laughs> let me go ahead and let me go ahead and let's um Ms. McLaw just go ahead and call your first witness. Yeah, no, I, I, I would invoke the rule of sequestration. There's a number of witnesses here that intend to testify. Um I think that Mr. Bird and Ms. Frazier have to remain in because they both have pending applications. But outside of that, I think that Mr. Dr. Givens, Mr. Wang, and Mr. West all need to be excluded. That's totally one one hundred percent correct. All right, so who is who? Wang always gets excluded. Mr. Wang, Dr. Ra, and Mr. West all need to go into the break. I mean, the waiting room right now. Yes. Well, not Dr. Givens, and he's going to be my first witness. Okay. okay. Understood. So I will be Mr. Wang and Mr. West. I will be putting you guys in the waiting room. Um, and when they get ready to call you, I'll bring you back into the main me meeting. Okay. And I want everybody to understand. I'm going to address all these warrants at one time. So because um, they're all inter inter intertwined. Okay. Um, it, it, there, there could be a strong possibility that everybody gets a warrant issued against them, and then everybody goes to jail. All right, I'm putting them in the waiting room. Here we go. All right. All right, Miss McGraw. Your Honor, I call Dr. Roderick Givens. I believe, Your Honor, you had already sworn in. You've already been sworn in. Is that correct, Ms. Givens? I swore in you earlier. Yes. That's okay. Correct. She's out of yes. the room. Okay. Good evening, Dr. Givens. Good evening. Will you state your name for the record, please? Yes, Roderick Givens. And Dr. Givens, uh, where do you reside? Uh, 2013 Rupert's Lane, Atlanta. Okay. And how do you know uh, the move at Brittany Ebney? Uh, friends of ours. Uh, we moved into the neighborhood about a year and a half ago. And, and in addition to being friends, you're neighbors? Yes. Correct. Well, she's down the street, yes. Okay. And how do you know Jason Burke? Uh, he's the immediate neighbor uh, facing my house to the uh, left. All right. And uh, where were you on September 23rd, 2023? Uh, I was at my home that evening. Oh, did you have anybody uh, over to your home that evening? Yes, I had a it was college uh, game night, so I invited um, some neighbors over um, that evening. Okay. And who were those neighbors that actually showed up on September 23rd, 2023? Uh, we had Miss um, Edney and Mr. Wang. Uh, Steve West, um, another uh, neighbor who was there was a gentleman named Judd. Um, he lives in the neighborhood and his um, uh, live-in partner, Mary, and then also uh, Mr. Byrne and Ms. Frazier. Now, uh, in the beginning of the evening, um, is it correct that Mr. Byrne and Ms. Frazier were not initially at this get-together? Is that correct? That's correct. Everyone that I mentioned um, was there, uh, including uh, Steve West. Uh, we're at the uh, premises, and later on, Mr. Byrne and Ms. Fraser uh, made it over. Were you sitting with Ms. Edney and Mr. Wang uh, on September 23rd, 2023? Yes, we. Uh, it's my side porch. Um, it's open air. Uh, it's got a television and a fireplace, and a uh, 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 um, wicker seating arrangement where it's a love seat, a three seater, and then an individual seat. And so myself and Mr. Wang were on the same three-seater. He was immediately to my left and then to his left in a single chair was Ms. Edney. Now, on this side porch, um, would, if someone were arriving to come over, would they have entered the side porch to your right? That's correct. Okay. And if they had entered to your right, Mr. Wang was immediately to your left and Ms. Edney was further back to your left. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. When Mr. Byrne and Ms. Frazier arrived, um, how did they enter the porch? Um, well, they, they entered the porch. Um, it's it's um, If you face the front door, it's a side porch. And so there's a, a, just a simple you know, walkway um, um, along the house to it. Probably 15, 20 feet uh, would be the approach distance. And they would have approached from my right side. All right. And when they approach from your right side, um, what did you hear Mr. Burns say? 
Well, um, uh, there wasn't any conversation until basically they came up the porch. I stood up to greet them, said hello. So basically they walked up to the seating area. Um, and so there was the initial thing was me saying, hey, how you doing? You know, good to see you. Shook his hand, you know, greeted Nicole. And so that was the you know initial conversation. Um, what spawned after that took probably 30 seconds before we had a full physical altercation. So it was a very quick um, sequence of events after that. Okay. Now, what did Mr. Burns say, if anything, after you shook hands and said, good to see you? Yeah, I, I said, hey, good to see you. Um, and then he, you know, basically spoke to acknowledge, um, you know, Miss Edney and Mr. Wang, you know, just, hey, how you doing? But there was no response from them. Uh, Miss Edney was actually texting a friend. I mean, I hate to be a 13 year old, but we got a Peter, we got a Wang and we got Rod's iPad. We were both sort of, she was texting sort of a mutual friend at the time. And so basically she just focused on her telephone. She just essentially ignored, just, just stayed focused on the phone, really did not acknowledge his presence or anything. And neither did um, Mr. Wang. Um, and so that was, you know, maybe about five seconds, just, hey, you know, you're not going to say anything. And then there was something to the effect, you know, of, well, you don't have to be a B about it. And um, at that point, um, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, uh, Dr. Gibbons, who, does, who said you don't have to be a bitch about it? Uh, Mr. Byrne. Yeah. Right. Okay. And was Mrs. Edney standing or sitting at the time that Mr. Byrne was addressing her? Uh, she was sitting. Okay. And then what happened next, Dr. Gibbons? And so after, you know, the comment of, hey, you know, you know, you don't have to be, you know, a bitch about it. That's when she said, you know, something to do with your girlfriend's a bitch. And then she stood up. Okay, she is who? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Miss Edney stood up. So she said, Miss Edney said, your girlfriend's a bitch, and then she stood up. Okay. Now, in relation to uh, physically where everyone's at at this moment in time, was Miss Edney still to your left? Yes, yeah, she was still to my left, probably about five to six feet away. Okay. And where was Mr. Byrne in relation to you physically at that point? Uh, immediately to my right, within one or two feet. Okay. Where was Ms. Fraser located uh, at that moment in time? Um, probably about two to three feet behind Mr. Byrne. Was she closer to uh, the end of the porch, would you say? Yes. Or, right. Okay. She would have been right. And that would have, again, been to your right. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All these questions have been leading. I've been pretty patient, but they're still coming. Um, Ms. McGloss? Your Honor, I'm asking the questions, moving this along. Okay. Still coming. That's the leading question. I just yeah. actually asked any questions. Objection sustained. Thank you, Judge. Dr. Gibbons, uh, were you able to observe uh, Mrs. Fraser and Mr. Byrne and Ms. Edney as you were standing there? Yes. At any point in time prior uh, to uh, Mr. Byrne striking Mrs. Edney, did you ever see Mrs. Edney raise her hand? No, not at all. Okay. After uh, Mrs. Edney stood up, what happened next? So immediately sensing tension, my, my and she, you know, she stood up again. I sense some tension <laughs> well, with the bang head, wang head biting and whatnot. You know, I sense some tension. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm very in tune that way. It was an immediately tense situation. It went from relaxed to just sort of a, a, a thick sort of animosity that I could sense. I, you know, approached Miss Edney with the intention of just simply moving her inside into the kitchen, just and then asking Mr. Byrne to leave. And so I'm facing Miss Edney as she's facing um, uh, Mr. Byrne. Um, and so basically, I'm in between them. So Mr. Byrne is behind me. I'm facing Miss Edney. Miss Edney is right in front of me. Um, and at that point. We're all within one foot of each other. So Mr. Byrne is a foot behind me, or really, you know, his chest is sort of touching my back. Miss Edney is immediately in front of me. And it was the most odd thing I've ever experienced, but I had no idea that coming from behind my right ear would be a punch that lands on Miss Edney's left cheek. And I'm shocked by that. And then I see, you know, from the uh, left of me, I, um, you know, Mr. Burns' left arm, or you know, with the bottle striking her right shoulder. 
And was so immediately, Mr. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dr. Givens. Uh, were you able to observe what uh, Mr. Byrne had in his in his hand when he struck Ms. Edney on her left shoulder? Yes. I mean, when when he approached, he actually you know, had you know a bourbon bottle that he, that he brought and said, "Hey, you know, this is you know gift for the house." Um, and so basically, before we sat down or whatever, like I said, this happened so quickly. So it was, "Hey, how you doing?" Comments, comments. She stands up. I'm in between. There's a punch, and then the bottle thrown, just like that. So it took me a second. Um, without getting into further detail, there were drugs involved that people were that quickly. Okay. And because you were facing Ms. Edney, were you able to observe before Mr. Burns strikes her in the face, did she raise her hand at all? She, she did not raise her hand. There was no physical threat, no um, move that anybody would consider um, you know, threatening. Um, and again, I'm, I'm five foot ten. I'm, you know, two hundred and five pounds. She's probably five foot four, and maybe on a heavy day, she may be one hundred and thirty pounds. Maybe I don't know. But either way, I mean, there was no threatening move, and I was in between both of them anyway, with the intention again of just simply, hey, this is a tense situation. Let me just move her inside. But before that opportunity even happened, you know, we had the punch and the swing that occurred. After See, I'm going to use Ms. Fowler's words. She now is in a thruple. Mrs. Edney in the face with his fist. What could you tell? Was it a closed fist or was it an open-handed strike? It it was it was a closed fist. Again, you know, it's come. I, it was it was so quickly, but yeah. I mean, my thought is that it was it was a closed fist that really grazed you know the left cheek. It wasn't enough to knock her back, but it certainly did. I mean, it wasn't enough to knock her down, but it was at least a strike where I could see her eye open and kind of her head sort of move um, backwards a bit. Okay. And then after Mr. Burns strikes Mrs. Edney for the second time with the bottle, what happened next? Well, and th this was sort of um, where, you know, uh, Mr. Wang let, you know, got up from the seat and um, wrapped his arms around Mr. Byrne and basically everybody kind of went to the ground because it was a thing of Mr. Byrne grabbed Miss Edney, even though I'm in between, I actually end up kind of going to the ground. Mr. Uh, Wang is entangled into this thing. And so, and again, no time flat, there's a grab, a pull and a fall. And in fact, on the way down, my right cheek hits somebody's shoulder, but I couldn't tell you, but you know, I kind of was dazed for a second because it- We're talking about flying entangled Wang here. May have been Mr. Wang's shoulder in the process of getting to to you know Mr. Byrne, but uh, you know everybody's on the ground. I'm actually my right arm is kind of stuck you know in the scrum for lack of a better word until one of our other neighbors was able to come and get Mr. Byrne kind of in a headlock and pull him off. They sure do. When when you were down on the ground, did you observe or were you able to observe whether or not Mr. Byrne was physically located on top of Mrs. Edney? I'm sorry. What was the question? Was were it? you able Were you able to to observe whether or not Mr. Byrne was physically located on top of Mrs. Edney? Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, Ms. Edney and Mr. Wang were basically on the bottom, sort of pinned. Mr. Byrne was on top, kind of my right arm and shoulder was kind of squeezed in between Mr. Byrne and Mr. Ms. Edney and and Mr. Wang. And it took a second for me to kind of wiggle out of it. Did you observe at all uh, whether or not Mr. Byrne? Um, had his arms or arms yes, your honor, these are all lead, yeah. these are all leading uh, i mean yeah. they are leading but you allow you just allow her to uh 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 I, been, just I'm, 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 I'm trying to give her a little bit of leeway to move through it but i'm objecting now judge okay um miss miss mclaw of course you know you can't do leading questions so i need to be open yes your honor dr gibbons uh what were your observations uh, if any um about uh mr burns contact with mr wang um what i recall is is that uh, Mr. Byrne had sort of his right elbow kind of jammed up underneath um, Mr. Wang's chin because he was on the ground. His right arm, right hand is somewhere around the neck, upper, you know, between the neck and chin area of um, Ms. Edney. Probably about 15 seconds of that, of people kind of wrangling and kind of getting the loose, um, but, you know, uh, Mr. Wang's able to kind of get the pressure off of his neck. Ms. Edney's kind of, you know, 
trying to get them his hand you know from around her neck area and then our neighbor is able to get mr burn off of everybody so this is just all you know five or ten different actions all happening within about 10 seconds whose hands were around mrs edney's neck uh that would have been mr burns but uh, hand forearm area is kind of jammed up underneath the neck Dr. Givens, what do you do for a living? I'm a radiation oncologist. And you are a medical doctor in good standing in the state of Georgia? Yes, Your Honor. Relevance other than witness bolstering? Your Honor, um, it's relevant because uh, there, in opening, you heard statements by Mr. Spiesman that there were no visible injuries. He's a medical doctor. I'm going to get into what his observation of her injuries were. This is why asking him I think why it's what he does is relevant. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Dr. Givens, uh, the after the everyone separated, what were your observations? How come we didn't talk about what Wang does? Observations of Mrs. Edney's injuries, and let's start with her face. Okay, well, and I actually attended to her after Mr. Byrne left, also. But she did have a clear, you know, red mark on her left cheek um, immediately um, uh, after the altercation, as well as a um, probably four and a half by five inch um, red area on the on her right um shoulder um that was really tender and, and so i actually um pulled out ice pack and gave her an ice pack for both areas after you know mr Byrne had been dismissed but uh clearly she had been struck in those two areas as what i witnessed you know when i was standing in between and what was M mrs uh edney's um emotional state that you were able to observe after being struck twice by Mr. Byrne? Uh, mortified, um, shaking, um, quite upset, uh, and um, uh, pretty much inconsolable. Um, and, and that's, and it took a long time to just really even be able to get her to just sort of sit down because she was hyperventilating. And um, uh, it just took a while, and by a while, I would say at least 10 or 15 minutes just to get her to calm down and breathe easy. Um, was that the only time between the hour, between the day, September 23rd and September 24th, 2023, that you attended to Mrs. Edney? No, actually that same night, a, a second time, um, because after the, um, altercation, they stayed at the house probably for about another 45 minutes to an hour. You know, we we're just trying to wrap our heads around all of this. She was, who, you know, who stayed at the house? Uh, that'll have been uh, myself, Mr. Wang, uh, Ms. Edney. Um, the two neighbors, um, the, the one uh, who um, helped, um, his name is Judd, um, who, he um, is the one who pulled Mr. Byrne off of, uh, off of Miss Edney, as well as Mr. West. Um, so those were the people who were still at the house afterwards. Um, uh, Judd and Mary left, uh, Steve stayed for a while, but eventually uh, Mr. West left, and so it was just myself, Miss Edney, and uh, Mr. Wang for about another hour or so. And then they said they were gonna actually go home. Uh, and probably about 30 minutes later, I get a call from Mr. Wang that says, hey, Brittany's short of breath and she thinks she's having a heart attack. And I said, where are you? And he said, next door at McKenzie. So that's immediately, if you face my house immediately to the right. So I hop over there uh, real quick and she's, and, and uh, uh, McKenzie's a nurse and so, um, Edney's sitting there. She's uh, sort of pale in the face, hyperventilating, breathing hard. Um, and I immediately recognize and when I come in, she says I'm having a heart attack. But I immediately recognize that she was having an anxiety or panic attack. And so um, those steps, you know, um, Miss uh, uh, McKenzie had a uh, stethoscope. I listened to her heart, checked her pulse. Her pulse was racing. The uh, uh, heartbeat was normal. Uh, and then it took about 15 minutes. And I just had to get her to calm down, sort of breathe slowly, you know, breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth to finally get her, you know, settled down. Um, and so I attended to her at that point. It took about 20 minutes or so before um, she had settled. Um, and I, I probably stayed for about another half hour and then went back home. And then she experienced a similar episode the following day. Did you call law enforcement after you saw Mr. Burns strike Mrs. Edney in the face and then strike her on the arm? No, I did not. 
Why not, Dr. Gibbons? That that was something where I, I left to them. You know, it was one of those things of, look, you, you guys manage it however you want. I, I didn't feel it was my place to you know, call the police in that situation. And on September 23rd, 2023, were you interviewed by law enforcement? I was not. Okay. Were you ever interviewed by law enforcement, Dr. Givens? No. That's all I have, Your Honor. Okay, Mrs. Bissell. Thank you. All right, Dr. Givens. Good to see you again. Sorry, under these circumstances. Um, all right. Um, we previously had a, a hearing on the on what there's been allegations of stalking, right? If there was a hearing. I don't know what the you were you were called as a witness at that hearing, weren't you? Right, I was a witness. And Miss McCaws was the lawyer that represented uh, Miss Edney, right? Yes. Okay, but before Miss McCaws, you're aware that Miss Edney was represented by a woman named Lisa West, right? Your Honor, I'm going to object to relevance. We're here on battery. And so you're I'm about to show call. bias. I'm about to show bias. I'm going to overrule the objection. Go ahead. Thank you. And so you're aware that Miss uh, Miss Edney was previously represented by Miss West, right? That's what I understand. Yes. Okay, and you know Miss West, don't you? Yes. How do you know Miss West? She is the cousin of my wife. Okay. So she's family to you, right? Um, I, not blood relative, but I've known her since yeah, for a number of years, yes. How long have you known Miss West? It goes back to college days, so 1980s. Okay. So you consider Miss West a close friend, right? I would consider that. And is it fair to say that you refer to Miss Hattie to Miss West? No. Okay. So she, she coincidentally hired your wife's first cousin in this case, right? No, they Jackson, met. Your Honor, he said he didn't refer her. It would be speculation. I'm, I'm just asking him if he knows how they connected, Judge. I mean, this goes to his credibility. His sure, I mean, lawyer was his, his Your Honor. He's willing, he's, willing, Mr. Law, he's willing to answer it. Go ahead, Mr. Yeah. So actually, Miss West met my wife at uh, my wife's birthday party. So that would have been in June. That would have been their first introduction. Okay. You said Miss West met your wife. You met Miss West. Well, met I, I had a birthday party for my wife and invited Miss um, um, West. Miss West. Okay. Right. And I, that's where they met. So and by that, the way, that's where Miss West met Miss Edney. There we go. Sorry. I think you. All right. So, so at a birthday. So, and you would agree that Miss Edney is a pretty close friend of yours, right? Yes. Okay. So Miss Edney is a, a pretty close friend of yours. And her previous lawyer, um, who she met at the birthday party, Miss West, is a pretty close friend of yours, right? Right. So keep in mind, the, they met my wife's birthday is in June. So in June is when they met. Okay. And, okay. I, and I'm just talking about you. So it's fair to say that you care about what happens in Miss Edney, right? I care about, yeah, I mean, she's a friend, but okay. I, I, my testimony is unbiased. What happens, what happens. So that's what I'm testifying okay. about. Despite the fact that she... Um, retain your wife's first cousin at the previous that, year, right? To me, that has absolutely no bearing in my testimony. Okay. All right. That's fair. All right. So just so I'm clear, so you indicated that my client, uh, and you would, well, I should say this, you would agree that it's unlikely my client knew that Miss Edney was going to be at your party, right? You didn't disclose that to her, did you? No, I did not disclose that. Okay. So when he when he arrived at the party with Miss Frazier, his fiance, it's fair to say he had no knowledge she was going to be there, right? That's Objection, correct. Your Honor. That would call for speculation as to what Mr. Burns' knowledge was. That's one hundred percent correct, Mr. Fisman. So, based on you, you took no actions to inform him that she would be there, right? Correct. Okay. All right. And you probably didn't tell Miss Edney that Mr. Burns would be there either, right? That's correct. Okay. And and that's because you didn't believe that there was going to be any friction or any issues between the two of them, right? That's correct. Okay. Um, and you were also aware that the two of them were, were, were pretty decent friends in the past, right? Yes. Okay. In fact, you're aware that they traveled the world together as couples, right? You're an objection relevance. There, there, there's an allegation that my client walks up and effectively cold clocks Miss Edney in the face, right? And so the, the, if there's any aggravation or non-aggravation leading up to that moment, that goes to the likelihood of the series of events that they occurred. So it's absolutely relevant. May I respond, Your Honor? Yes. Your Honor, the legal standard is is whether or not Mr. Byrne intentionally made physical contact of an insulting or provoking nature with the person of another or intentionally caused physical harm to another. So the fact that, as Dr. Gibbons has testified, Mr. Byrne punched my client in the face and then hit her with a bottle, whether it doesn't matter if they were best friends or not, it, it really doesn't matter. It's not well, I, gotta so. agree. 
I gotta agree with him, Mr. Spisman. So okay, I move on, Judge. Okay, no problem. All right. So um, you indicated that uh, Mr. Burner rides with Ms. Frazier, and they bring you a gift for having them over, right? Right. Bottle of bourbon, right? Bottle of bourbon. Okay. And he um, initially says hello or greets Miss Edney, right? So he addresses her in a polite way to begin with, correct? Well, yes. He, he says, "Hey, how you doing?" Um, okay. And there's nothing about the way he said it that, that caused you concern or made you sense that there was going to be any issue, right? Not at that immediate point, correct. Okay. And then he says to her, well, you don't have to be a bitch about it, indicating you don't have to ignore me, right? Objection, right. Your Honor. That would cause speculation. There would be no way for Dr. Gibbons to know what was in Mr. Burns' mind. Judge, he can interpret what he heard. That's all I'm asking for. If he doesn't know the answer, Dr. Gibbons is perfectly capable of saying, I don't know. I can assure you of that. I'll, I'll overrule that. Just go ahead, Mr. Sisman. Thank you. And so he, he, he indicates to... Um, Miss Edney, you don't have to be a bitch about it. And, and from your perspective, it was because he was referencing a non-response, correct? Well, that's correct. Okay. And then at that time, she responds by saying, your girlfriend is a bitch, right? Right. Okay. And then she actually stands up, right? Correct. And now you indicate that at that point in time, um, Mr. Byrne was about a foot from you and Miss Frazier was two to three feet behind you, correct? Uh, she was two to three feet behind Mr. Byrne. Okay. And you indicated that at that time when she stands up, Ms. Edney's five to six feet behind you, correct? That's correct. But what you testified to is, is that the altercation occurred, Ms. Edney was just a foot away from you, right? Right. And so here's the, the scenario here, is that when we, we go from escalation from high to you don't have to be a bitch about it to your girlfriend's a bitch. And so I'm astute enough to recognize, okay, this is escalated from just, you know, sort of a dislike to really something's you know, you're going to be a yelling match a shouting match and so my intention was just simply to intervene and just let's just remove um um you know this edney from the situation let, let me just push her inside and just let's just you know because i've never experienced something like that i mean everybody's professional but that just escalated uh, out of nowhere and that's because at least part because miss edney said your girlfriend's a bitch right that helped escalate it didn't it well, everything escalated, yeah. I mean... So is the answer yes, that Miss Adney saying your girlfriend's a bitch to Mr. Byrne escalated the incident? I'm saying it escalated just the tension in the, situ the entire situation. Right. Right. And then you also indicated that Miss Adney went from five feet away from you to a foot away from you. So she clearly progressed onto the escalated situation, meaning she moved toward Mr. Byrne, didn't she? She, could, right, she did close the distance. Um, okay. So at this point in time, Mr. Byrne has made an inappropriate comment. Ms. Edney has responded with an inappropriate comment, but then moved closer to Mr. Byrne while he stood his ground, correct? Um, that would be, yeah, I mean, he, he, did, he didn't move uh, forward. Okay. I moved toward. I just want to take uh, a moment to point out that this gets so, so much worse. Or, yes, she moved right. toward both of us. Because, again, Mr. Byrne was immediately next to me, so he was a foot away. Right. right. And then, yeah, so she did you know, basically kind of come to get closer. To, right. So, yeah. so what I'm saying is while, while Mr. Burns stood next to you and did not, did not move toward Ms. Edney, Ms. Edney closed five feet of space and moved toward Mr. Burns, correct? I don't have a She did approach. Yeah, come close, right. Okay. And now you indicated that when you saw her come close, you turned to her to stop her from progressing toward Mr. Burns any further, right? Objection, Your Honor. That, that, that completely misstates his testimony. He never said that. He can, he can answer the question, Judge. This is cross-examination. Yeah, I didn't have to turn to her. I mean, I'm facing her, and actually, I'm standing um, standing up with the intention of actually, you know, approaching her, you know, to just, hey, I really just wanted to just move her out off the porch area uh, and out of the way. Um, and, and so, th at that point, there was no threatening move made by her other than simply walking toward him. But really, I was in between, so she was really coming closer to me. Um, and so there wasn't anything threatening there, but well, hold on a second. I, didn't have to to her. I was automatically sort of facing her, but I'm looking at the TV where she walks in. Well, hold on a second. You're saying that her, you said this incident occurred within 30 seconds, right? Right. So the only way she could have closed those five feet is very fast, right? Well, she's two or three feet away. So two or three steps, you go, she okay. stands up, walks two or three steps and that closes three, you know, closes five feet real quickly. Okay. All right. So she closes those five feet real quickly. She's caused Miss. She called Mr. Burns' fiance a bitch, and it's your statement that that wasn't in any way provocative or aggressive. Is that your testimony? No, the, the the I mean, what she says, your girlfriend's a bitch. Yeah, that's provocative. Uh, but that wasn't anything violent or threatening from a standpoint of 
She didn't raise her hand. She wasn't look. She didn't have a weapon in her hand. Nothing to that effect. Okay. And you would agree with me that Mr. Byrd has no duty to retreat or run away from her progressing toward him, right? He wouldn't have to, no. Okay. All right. And you would also agree with me that you were facing Miss Edney, so your back was to Mr. Byrne, right? Correct. Okay. And so you'd agree with me that you don't have eyes in the back of your head, so you can't see what happened from behind you, right? Correct. Okay. All right. So then you say at that point in time, what you see is you see Mr. Byrne, I think, throw his, his right hand around you and strike Miss Edney, right? But that's correct. I'm facing Miss Edney. He's immediately behind me, and I can hear slash feel his arm come up around, and I can see his right fist strike her cheek. Okay. So now, we, you said that you were right next to Miss Edney. Were you able to see both of her hands at all times? Yes, she was in, in front of me. Okay, so you said she was in front of you, but for Mr. Burns to come around you, she would have to be inches next to you, right? No. She, so, was, so, within, she was within 12 to 15 inches from me. Okay, and within 12 to 15 inches from you, you're able to not only see what Mr. Byrne does from behind you, but also exactly where Miss uh, Edney's hands are at all times prior to him throwing that alleged first punch. Is that your testimony? I can see uh, anything from the side of you know, my peripheral vision here on the side. I can, uh, first of all, I felt his arm whisk by me. I heard the air sort of of the punch. And then once it came into sight, I saw his right hand strike her left cheek. So that's not eyes behind my head. That's peripheral vision and moving forward. She's immediately in front of me. Did you see where her feet were at all times? Yeah, they were on the ground. Okay, so feet were on the ground, hands are in the air, and you can't, and you're 12 to 15 inches away from her, right? Objection, Your Honor, that misstates his testimony. He said he's going to move on, Mr. Spisman. We're not in the air. Yeah, I'll move on. Um, all right, then at that point in time, you indicate that Mr. Wang jumps off of the couch and wraps his arms around Mr. Byrne, right? Right. You indicate that Mr. Wang, Mr. Byrne, Ms. Edney, and you, Dr. Gibbons, all fall to the ground, four of you. Well, I go to the ground. That's correct. And while you are on the ground, sandwiched between, I don't know, let's call it 500 pounds of people, you're able to see exactly where Mr. Burns' hands are at all times, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it, there was, yeah, I mean, we, I could see that his arm was, you know, uh, or his left arm was pinned on her chest, neck area. His elbow has Mr. Um, Wang pinned down. My arm is caught kind of underneath. Uh, uh, Mr. Burns' uh, chest for about eight to ten seconds before I'm able to wiggle out and get free. You agree that you indicate there was five to ten actions that occurred in less than 30 seconds, right? Um, that was what your testimony was previously, that there was five to ten actions that occurred within 30 seconds. That's accurate, yeah, right? That, yeah, that's, yeah, that and, happened and pretty quickly. And it's also your testimony you're able to see every one of those five to ten actions, right? Everything that I described is what I saw. Okay. When, when, when Mr. Byrne allegedly struck Miss Edney and everyone responded, wouldn't, everyone, wouldn't Mr. Wayne coming in from the side push you kind of toward Mr. Byrne so you're kind of sandwiched between them? Not necessarily. Okay. I so mean, because Mr. Wayne, when he jumps up and, you know, um, wraps around uh, Mr. Byrne, there's a spin. He goes to the ground. Was, you know, uh, uh, Miss Edney goes to the ground. I'm pinned in between Mr. Byrne, Ms. Edney, and partially uh, Mr. Wang until I can wrangle myself out and free. You facing down or are you facing up? I'm facing down. Okay. All right. And so did you ever see Ms. Edney bite Mr. Byrne on the top of the head? No. That was on the five to ten actions you didn't see, right? That's correct. Did not see that. Okay. All right. Um, and you would agree that um, that Mr. Wang's, in, I mean, that guy's in pretty good shape, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's physically fit. Like, by physically fit, I mean, he lifts weights. He's a really muscular, strong guy, right? Yes. You would agree that he weighs more and is much stronger than Mr. Byrne would appear to be based on... Oh, yeah, Wang, Wang is a specimen. Your um, visual estimates. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, Mr. Wang is muscular, but he's short. Um, I, I, I would maybe estimate his weight maybe about one. 60 to 180. Okay. You'd agree with me, though, if you had to pick one of them in an arm wrestling match, you take Mr. Wayne 10 out of 10 times, right? I wouldn't take either one of them. Okay. All right. All right. So just so I'm yes, clear. Ms. Bisman, I need to break in for a minute. 
Um, you guys want to wrap this. What is that? I, I can whoop both their asses. I think that's what he's trying to say here. <laughs> this hearing is is just out there on so many levels. So now, hold on one second. Let me get with Miss Linton and Mister Mister Williams, and then I still I gotta take a restroom break after I get with them. Okay. Come um, back in five minutes, Judge. That okay? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Come back in five minutes. Okay, Judge. All right, uh, Linton and uh, uh, Williams, Nicholas. I, and I'll do uh, uh, Miss McLaw and Mr. Spitzman. Uh, if you can hear me, I'm just gonna be on. I'm gonna be not in my video, but I do. Uh, maybe you guys may want to have some more meaningful contact and conversation regarding this matter. All right, Judge. I I, I went into the breakout room and I was told the only offer is my client going to jail. So I, okay. I don't know what I can do with that, Your Honor. Okay. All right. All right. I'm back. Okay. I think I just had two or three questions, Judge. I'm all done. All right. Um, Dr. Givens, you indicated that, uh, um, well, let me ask you this question. That bottle of bourbon didn't break, did it? No, it didn't break. So throughout all this scuffle, him hitting her with the bottle, four, three men and one woman falling to the ground, five, 600 pounds of people, that bottle of bourbon didn't break, right? Didn't break. Okay. Now, initially you said that my client punched me and said me in the face, but then you classified it when I crossed you as a graze, that he grazed her with his fist. Which one was it? Well, I mean, I look at a punch or a graze, it's her, his fist struck her left cheek, but it wasn't so much of a direct hit that, you know, I think of a punch more as cold cock where you knock somebody out. This was enough to cause her head to sort of rock back, but not a direct um, uh, right hook that would have, because really that would have knocked her out, but it was enough to knock her head back and to create a mark, but not so much to knock her out or knock her to the ground. Okay. And it was your testimony that um, Mr. Burns simultaneously had a hand on Miss Edney, a hand on Mr. Wang, um, and was simultaneously fending off other people all at the same time while he was on the ground, right? I didn't say anything about him fending off other people. Okay. All right, wrap it on up, Mr. Sisson. Nothing else, Judge. All right. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Walls? Nothing uh, else for this witness, Your Honor. Okay. All right, let me get your next witness. Next witness. Oh, Steve West, Your Honor. Judge, I have no objection. Dr. Gibbons being excused. He's got somewhere else to go. Um, Dr. Gibbons, you said you objected to him being excused? I said I have no objection. Oh, no objection. Dr. Gibbons, you're excused if you, if you desire to. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. All right. Or you can stay on, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I'll stay on. Just all right. All right, go ahead, Mr. Gloss. Your Honor, I call Steve West. Okay. Oh, he's hey, hanging Mr. Given Dr. Given's gonna stay on. I just asked for the rule C sequestration remain in place. I guess I might have to recall him. Who knows? Okay. Dr. Dr. Gibbons, you stay on. You might I might have to put you into a breakout room, okay? That's fine. I'll stay. Okay. All right. Your Honor, I believe Mr. West was likewise already sworn in. Mr. West, you were already sworn in previously? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Mr. West, will you state your name for the record? Stephen West. And Mr. West, um, how do you know the plaintiff in this case, or the move-in in this case? Uh, she, I, I know uh, Ron Cheryl Givens. Cheryl Givens is uh, my wife's cousin, my wife's first cousin, and I met. I Not met. to interrupt, but there's another witness in the room. I don't know if everyone can see it on the bar, but there's another witness in the room. I just wanted to alert that because of technology. Excuse me. I don't see anybody else. Nicole Frazier is on my screen in the room. She's, if you, she's a complaint. She, she's, 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 complaint. she's been on. Okay. Ms. Brit, that's Brittany. Brit, that's Ms. First Brittany. Ms. Okay, Eddie, that's first hours, please. Okay. Thank you. Um, Lisa, Lisa and Cheryl are first cousins, and I met. Uh, this is a whole different. I way. met Ms. Edney through uh, Rod and Cheryl at a social event. And by Lisa, you were referring to your wife, Lisa West? Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, my wife, Lisa West. Okay. Mr. West, what do you do for a living? I'm an attorney. And you're an attorney in good standing with the State Bar of Georgia, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And on September 23rd, 2023, where were you? Uh, I went and visited Rod. We were watching uh, uh, football games throughout the day. All right. And were you located on the porch when the uh, when um, Dr. Gibbons observed? Objection, Your Honor, leading. I haven't even finished the question, Your Honor. Were, were you located well, on where, the porch when where were you? I mean, that's a leading already. Start leading. I'm sorry. Okay, that's correct. Where were you located um, that that evening? Physically located, Mr. West. 
at the time of the incident, I was in the kitchen. Okay. What did you hear? Uh, I was in the kitchen with a couple. We were sitting around talking at the table, and we just heard a whole bunch of what I would just call commotion. Okay. After you heard this commotion, what did you do? Uh, me and the other gentleman, uh, whose name escapes me right now, we jumped up, ran outside. There, uh, <laughs> I mean, there was a scrum of people, so we just started pulling people out of the scrum. Okay. When you say there was a scrum of people, what specifically did you observe? Like everybody was all together on the ground, on the deck. Okay. Were you able to observe where Mrs. Edney was located on the ground? Uh, I imagine she had to be at the bottom because I didn't see her. Okay. And uh, had you ever met Mr. Byrne prior to that evening? I don't think so. And after you started pulling people off, what happened next? I, I pulled Peter off um, and held him off to a side. And yes. <clears throat> yes, he pulled Peter off. And at some point, <laughs> I was... I wasn't holding him, but I was physically separating uh, Mr. Byrne from the other people. And uh, do you recognize the individual you are referring to as Mr. Byrne um, on this link call? Uh, I'm sorry. I, I, yeah, you, you're fading away, Ms. McLaws. Oh, sorry, Judge. Do you recognize the individual uh, you've identified as Mr. Byrne on this Zoom call? Uh, yeah, he just finished drinking some water. Okay. So that would be the, the uh, respondent in this case, Jason Byrne? Yes, okay. Jason. Yes. Um, after you were physically separating Mr. Byrne, did you happen to have a conversation with him? Uh, yes, we we spoke. Yes. What did Mr. Byrne say to you? Uh, he said that he hit Miss Etney because she was about to hit him. Okay. Where were you when Mr. Byrne told you that he hit Mrs. Etney because she was about to hit him? Where Where were you at that point? Um, if if it's, well, I don't know how to describe it, but the porch or the area of the porch is like a sitting area where the incident happened. When he and I uh, had that exchange, we were standing closer to the front of the house. The house has like a wraparound porch. So we were maybe, I don't know, 15 feet from where the incident happened. Did Mr. Byrne make any statements to you at all about uh, any of Ms. Edney's actions besides um, she was about to... Yes, Your Honor, leading. I mean, yeah, that's a leading question, Mr. Bloss. Did besides the the statement you said, were there any other conversations you had with Mr. Burke? Uh, I think at some point he said he really wanted to apologize to Rod, and I I think I more or less said something like, you know, that's not a good idea right now. Um. I can't remember much else, to be honest. It was just, you know, that type of situation. Were you able to observe Mrs. Edney after uh, the incident that occurred? Yes. What were your observations? Um, she was very upset. Um, she said that she, you know, pretty much couldn't believe that a man had attacked her, I believe. Um, that was really a point of emphasis for um, in terms of the emotion that she had. Um, eventually she started to calm down over the course of several minutes. Uh, but the primary thing that I observed, she was just obviously very upset. Were you ever interviewed by law enforcement? No, no. I have nothing further, Your Honor. Mr. Slizzle. Thank you, Judge. Um, Mr. West, um, just to be clear, your, your wife is attorney Lisa West, right? Correct. Same Lisa West that represented Miss Edney at one point in time, right? Correct. And I imagine, just like me and my wife, you and Miss West share um, in the financial, you know, the money that comes into your household, right? I don't understand your question. Like she gets hired on a case, that's you guys sharing that money, right? Your husband and wife. That's not necessarily how we do things. I mean, we. Okay. <laughs> I don't want. I don't mean to pry, but you'd agree with me that Miss Edney paid Miss West money to represent her, right? I have no idea. I don't. That's what I'm saying to you. I don't get involved in my wife's business, and she doesn't get involved in mine. Okay, but you're aware that she represented Ms. Adam? Yes. Okay, and you're also clearly um, close friends with Dr. Gibbons and his wife, right? Yeah, sure. In fact, you kind of consider them family, wouldn't you? Well, it's my wife's family, so yes. Okay, fair, fair enough. Um, you did not witness the altercation at all, right? No, sir. 
Okay. All right. But what you did indicate is that Mr. Byrne indicated that he struck Miss Edney because Miss Edney was going to strike him, right? Yes. And I see the same question I asked you the last time. That could have been because he acted in self-defense, correct? That's what he would seem to be saying to me. All right. Nothing further, Judge. I just have one follow-up. I just want to follow up. Uh, Mr. West, I got a question. How yes. soon how soon after this incident did you have this conversation with Mr. Burns? It was as soon as we separated all the people out. Um so was like it within I, a, a 30 seconds, within a 45 seconds, within minutes? How soon? I would say within the span of maybe a couple minutes. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Ms. McGloss. Mr. West, um, in this conversation um, that you had with Mr. Byrne, uh, was there any indication that he had, did he ever indicate to you he had only shot? He's actually, you're not leaving. Once again, that's me leaving, Mr. McLaws. You got to be open in it. Yes, Your Honor. I, I have nothing further, Your Honor, for Mr. West. I'm going to reiterate once again um, to the attorneys that um, you guys may want to try to resolve this. Um, um, these seem like big friends and what have you. So, um, I mean, I hear what you're saying, but, um, you may want to see, can you take an opportunity as, as, as neutral and detached and, um, not neutral, detached, actually objective. I'm sorry. I'm neutral and detached and objective in this matter, have a conversation, a serious conversation about trying to resolve this. Judge, we are so open to that. I, I, I mean, the only statement I've got from Ms. McCall without her even talking to her client is the only thing we'll agree to is your client's going to jail. I, 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 we are amenable to anything but that, Judge. So I don't know what else we can do other than just indicate that to the court. That's the statement that was made to me. So, Mr. McLaws, you have no interest in trying to get it resolved? I, have I, don't, I, I don't. I've had conversations previously, not, Your Honor. That's not true. That, Ms. that Ms. is McLaws, true. I'm talking about right now. I'm not talking about what previously I'm talking about right now at this moment. Well, Your Honor. Let me just say this. Let me just say this right now that, you know, there could be a possibility that everyone here goes to jail. You haven't heard all the evidence, Your Honor, so I'm, I'm not sure you, how you can make that statement. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just making, I'm making an observation based upon so far two neutral persons have indicated what transpired that weren't involved in this, uh, what have you, and then even with the excited utterance that was made um, by the uh, Mr. Burns um, is that um, this matter, this situation was, um, was, and of course he, I asked, well, how much time between the time that he made it, this incident happen and he made a statement, and um, it's almost teetering on a simple assault. <laughs> Can make that just, observation, Your Honor. Just, Dr. Givens testified, my client never. I love it. The judge is trying to pressure them to settle, but he says something that's reasonable. Yeah, you know, from what I've heard so far, there's a chance all of you might end up in jail. <laughs> just think about that. Maybe get a breakout room. Do you think that's what happens? No, it's not what happens. Raise her hand. <laughs> okay, I'm just telling you what. I'm just saying so, what. The, I don't I'm see how that can be an assault. I'm just, I'm just saying to you what Mr. West has said, okay? You right. call him as a witness. Yes, you Judge, but you haven't heard all the evidence. Right, but what listen, you're going to hear, Your Honor, is that Mr. Hold on one second. Hold on, hold on, Mr. Biglaus. Hold on. This is your witness, okay? Your witness has came on and said that, of course, he didn't see anything, but he did have a conversation. Because you brought him on for strictly for the conversation he was having with Mr. Burns. And mm -hmm. in that conversation he had with Mr. Burns, he indicated that, hey, listen, that he did this because of the fact that she was about to strike him. Now, I'm just telling you that's what was said. Right. That is what he said, Your Honor. However, you haven't heard. Oh, just wait. Just wait. The, the, this one gets out of control. The, the attorneys haven't even begun to get into it with each other yet. Heard all the evidence. Mr. Right. Burns Ms. Ms. has Ms. already Ms. Ms. Your Honor. Mr. Gloss, I'm, I'm, listen, continue on with your case, okay? You, no, Your Honor. I think what absolutely concerns me is you are making statements on the record I'm and you have about what's, all the what? evidence. I'm just, I'm asking you, I asked a question about, is it a possibility you guys resolve it? I said, there could be a possibility that everyone goes, you're correct, I have not heard all the evidence, but there could be a possibility that everyone goes to jail. And I'm saying to you is that, hey, as I look at what's going on, what I hear what's going on, so far the two witnesses you have, uh, have presented, and then one witness, the last witness, you know, who said, of course he said he didn't see anything, but he did have this conversation mm -hmm. with Mr. Barnes. And you brought him on for this, for particularly for this conversation he had with Mr. Burns. Mm -hmm. And in that, in that conversation, he, he indicated that Mr. Burns told him that, hey, she was the threat, she threatened, basically, um uh basically in result of um he hit her as a result of he felt that she was she was about to hit him. That's, That's not, not what Mr. West testified to. Mr. Burns, but Your Honor, she was you about to hit him. The evidence. Uh, okay, I'm but I'm just I'm just concerns me about this conversation. I truly believe you've already made up your mind. I have not made up my mind. I, I'm just listening to what the evidence is. Like so you know, Judge I'm just, I'm just saying what the she she is uh 
cross the line into what I think is contempt at this point. He he doesn't go there with it, but she, I, what she's saying, uh, a lot of judges are hold, holding contempt for. Evidence so far. And, and I honestly believe, Judge, based on your statements, that there is enough to recuse you at this point. And I would ask that you be recused. Recusal is denied. Statement. Thank you. Recusal is denied. Ms. McLaws, recusal is denied. Thank you. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. But my thing is, right. What an incredibly stupid thing to say. Incredibly stupid, immature thing to say. You don't say to a judge, I believe there's enough for you to recuse yourself. No, 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 no. You file a motion to have him recused. You bring in a court reporter and you set for set it forth. You don't make these sort of vague threats. This is this is immature stupidity. But it's still fun. Now is that I'm just going off the two witnesses that you presented, okay? Right, and you haven't heard it all. Okay, how many other witnesses do you have? I have my client and then Mr. Byrne, who has already testified, Your Honor, at a previous hearing that he only shoved my client. Okay, and Mr. let me West ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Did you have that? Do you have that? You have that transcript? That's what I'm asking. Because I asked you that earlier, in the, in the, before we make this presentation, I said, do you have that transcript? It'd be impossible, Judge. We got the invoice just for the takedown today. It'd and that's what I'm saying. I, I asked you that in the beginning. Well, did you have that transcript? Because I was I was very much curious about what was trans, what uh, what occurred in that previous hearing as far as the testimony. Then, Judge, I would ask the court to continue this so we can have a transcript so that you can absolutely hear and, and see. Because the truth of all of this is very important, Your Honor. It's okay. very important to my I'm client. With I'm with you. I'm understanding. And, and then, yeah, I would ask for a continuance then, Judge, so we can get a certified copy so you can see Mr. Bourne's sworn testimony and why Mr. West's statements are important. He, he testified, Your Honor, that he shoved her. He swore, I never hit her. Therefore, Mr. W the statement he made to Mr. West, you could then draw the conclusion okay. that, that Mr. I don't Bourne have that information. Well, right, well, this, so I'd ask for continuance then so uh, we can well, get a certified um, copy. Well, Ms. McLaws, I asked you at the beginning, and you did not ask you about the transcript at the beginning. You could ask for a continuance at that point. You did not do that. But and, I can ask now. Yeah, I can well, ask at any point. Continuance is denied. Okay, continuance denied. Please go on with your next witness. Fine, Your Honor. Thank okay, you. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. West, uh, I have no further questions for Mr. West. May he be excused, Your Honor? Yes, no objection. Mr. West, you may be excused. Either you can go to the breakout room or you can leave. Either one. If the court doesn't need me anymore, I just assume. Okay. Well, they're excusing you, so I don't need you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Who's called your next witness? I'll call Brittany Edney. Don't you have Mr. Wang in there also? He's still in? Yes, Mr. Wang is still in the way. No, Mr. Wang's in, in the breakout room. I said Ooh. Brittany Edney. Oh, oh. you're not calling Mr. Wang? I haven't. Done. There's so much going on here, and it's all delicious. All of it. All of it. We got Mr. Wang in the waiting room. We, we, we've got we've got Miss Edney. Oh wait, this is good. We've got we've got the attorney just absolutely destroying her own credibility, and it gets worse. Decided oh, yet? Okay. All right. All right. All right, Miss Edney, you've been sworn. Okay, in this matter, uh, yes. under oath. And yes. I do want to caution you, you, you're not required to say, and of course your lawyer's already gone over this with you, you're not required to say anything at all um, in this, um, you're not required to say any, any testimony or any evidence. Um, if that's your choice, you have the right to remain silent, and that cannot be held against you. So yes. understanding that, um, my understanding is that Ms. McLaws is calling you as a witness, is that correct? One and a quarter, it's going to it's gonna um, switch back in a little bit here. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, yes Your Honor. Yes. All right, go ahead. You've already been sworn, go ahead. Pardon? So you've already been sworn, go ahead. Okay. Mrs. Edney, will you state your name for the record, please? I'm Brittany Edney. And where do you reside, Ms. Edney? 1940 River Birch Lane. Okay. And where were you on September 23rd, 2023? Um, I was on uh, Dr. Rod Givens' uh, side porch area where um, he was hosting a get-together, um, and I was on the porch where him and my husband... Mm-hmm. She's on Rod's side porch, if you know what I'm saying. And we're watching football on the television. And I was just on my phone because I don't like sports. And I was um, just sitting on the couch there. All right. When um, were you on Were you on your phone is what I think you just said? Yes, ma'am. Um, I was just like this talking to one of my friends because um, I was letting her know that uh, Rod had said hello and that kind of thing. So I was talking to one of my friends and texting. All right. Are you a whore? I object to the relevance of that, Your Honor. All right. What? I'll, I'll tie it up real quick, Judge. All yes, right, sir. go ahead. You're not a whore? <laughs>
Uh, at some point in time, Mr. Byrne and his fiance appeared on the porch. Is that correct? Yes. Sir. Now, these are all leaving. Just open into questions, please. Were you aware uh, that Mr. Byrne was going to be at the get together? No, ma'am. Would you have gone if you had been aware? Absolutely uh, not. <laughs> Why not? Um, because I had told him a year and a half ago when he was yelling and cussing at me on the phone. That's about your honor, re relevance. Um, your, your honor, I believe you sustained the objection as related to questions that occurred, things in the past. We're here for this battle. Uh, well, I, unfortunately, Mr. Spitzman, I want to understand what her state of mind was, so go ahead, Ms. Thank you, Yes, sir. Um, your honor, sir. Um, so uh, can you repeat the question? I'm sorry, that just... You, you said you would not have gone if you know that Mr. Byrne was there. I asked you why not. Um, because uh, when we had a falling out a year and a half ago over an HOA matter... Mike, this is the best part of your life. You know it. We know it. Everyone knows it. He was yelling and cursing at me on the telephone, and I told him he wasn't going to speak to me disrespectfully, and it was the final straw that I had had with him from his disrespect to other women, his just red flags of behavior, spraying women with hoses. Um, Objection, Your Honor. This is so all irrelevant. Um, I, I understand that, Ms. Edney. Go ahead and kind of streamline it, okay? If you could. Sure, so, so because of everything that I'd seen him do and say, even though I was friends with Nicole, um, I just was like, I don't want to have anything to do with you anymore because I don't, I'm not going to have you speak, a man speak to me this way. So I hung up on him and said, don't ever talk to me again. Since that day, I had not talked to him again. And um, he has basically a falling out with, had at this point with the entire neighborhood. Yes, so, Your Honor. Uh, Hold on. Relevant. Okay. I got it. All right. So just stick with the, the situation between you and Mr. Mr. Burns, okay? Right. So I, I guess what I was trying to explain, maybe I'm not saying it right, is people knew that I didn't want to be around him. Okay. Um, is how I'm trying to Hold say. Hold on one second. I yes, you are not saying it right. I, I got a, I got a problem that my computer is going to automatically restart because of the county in 15, 13 minutes, and I'm trying to stop it from restarting. If you can hold on, let me try to figure this out. All right, hold on one second. Yes. I can't put it on snooze, so and I don't know how long it's going to take for it to reboot. Um, it just popped up. Okay, Madam Clerk, hold on. Let me let me speak with let me call Madam Clerk. Okay, so I'm finna move to my phone, uh, so I can continue the hearing. All right. Uh, to move. Can everyone hear me? Okay, let me get out. Of, I'm going to close out this one here. I don't even know anymore. <laughs> Judge, make sure you connect to audio on your phone. It's not connected. Okay, it says, okay, join audio. There you go. Okay. Hey. Recording in progress. Right. Okay, can you get everyone hear me? Yes, Judge. Yes, Your oh, Honor. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Miss Edney. Uh, where, where are we at now, sir? I... I... All right. You left off of basically issues. We're saying that uh, everyone in the kind of everyone in the neighborhood knew that you did not want to be associated with him. Right. Yes, sir. So on September the twenty third, two thousand and twenty three, uh, where were you located physically? Um, sitting down on the couch. And how far away from the entrance to the side porch were you? The furthest away. It's up against the back railing. So the entrance is the front railing. The couch is up against the back railing. Prior to uh, Mr. Byrne and Ms. Fraser uh, arriving at the porch, were you ever physically located anywhere That's else? That's not a leading. This is leading. I'm not even done with the question. It's, were it's you a leading question. You it's not a leading it. question. Were you located somewhere else? Oh. As open-ended as it can get. Oh, do I want my Jane, you ignorant slut clip right now? Where were you Jane. located? Right. <laughs> I was I was sitting on the couch on the patio. Um, I was in the house previously making um, cheese dip on the stove for the group, making like queso and beef cheese dip. Uh, but then we were all uh, we had moved out there, so um, Peter and Rod could watch uh, the, the start of the game. And so I was just sitting there on the phone, uh, talk, texting to my friend while they watched the game outside. Prior to that occasion. Um Did you have any observations of Mr. Byrne that day? Yes. Um, when we were inside earlier in the kitchen, when I was making the, the cheese and queso dip, um, Rod was standing there with me chatting, and he has a, a, a huge, uh, like it takes up almost the size of the wall, uh, window from his, um, uh, from his kitchen that overlooks Jason's backyard. And um, uh, while, we, while we were standing there doing the dip stuff, and he was sitting there chatting with me, all of a sudden I see Right as this thing, it's huge. <laughs> She's making cheese and queso. I don't even know. 
I don't know what to do with this hearing. Rod turn around and, and, and wave like this through through the window. And I look and see Jason waving to him um, through that glass window. Um, but I mean, I didn't, you know, he was just waving to him and um, I didn't think anything like of it because he just waved to Jason. Yeah, I had no that. idea. Rod never made any comment like Jason was invited. Jason's coming. Um, Rod had actually told me and my husband, and we have, you know, text messages that um, uh, he understood that we didn't want to be around them because of what I had explained about Jason's past behavior. So when Mr. Byrne and Mrs. Fraser arrived onto the porch, um, what happened next? Um, they they were just greeting Rod or whatever. I, when I tell you I was ignoring them, I don't even know what they were saying amongst themselves because I was just genuinely ignoring them, just very casually, like on my phone, like just not going to have anything to do with them. Um, and that was my position on it. I was like, I'm just going to ignore them. They know that I don't have anything to do with them. You know, I blocked both of them on all social media and their phone numbers. You know, there wasn't any conversation to be had, so I was just going to ignore them, and that's what I did. Okay. And after you ignored them, what happened next? The, I wasn't, when I genuinely say I wasn't really listening to what he was saying to me, he was saying some stuff, but I really wasn't paying attention, and all of a sudden, her ignore me. And so I said, so I just looked up from my phone, and very casually, not like raising my voice, just speaking to you like I'm speaking now, I was like, but firmly, I was like, yes, because you were disrespectful to me last year, you know, year and a half ago. And then um, Nicole said something to the effect of get over it. That was over a year ago. And to which I said, no, you were a bitch to me then, too. I don't want to have anything to do with either of you is essentially what I said. Um, I wasn't yelling or screaming or anything like that. I was explaining why I was ignoring them and why I didn't want to have anything to do with them and to just like basically keep it moving. Like there's nothing to be seen here. There's nothing to do. Like just kind of keep it moving, you know, like just stop. No, don't, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to have anything to do with you type of thing. Were you sitting down uh, at yes, that point in time? The whole time from the moment they arrived. Yeah, I was just entirely sitting down. Yeah, even having this conversation sitting down. Okay. And where was Mr. Byrne? Uh, Jason was standing next to Rod holding um, and showing him a liquor bottle and okay. Nicole was off to the side. I didn't even really see her too much. She was off back to the side. All right. And after you made the statement to Mr. Byrne um, about what had happened, what happened next? He said, word for word, call my fiance a bitch and I will hit you. Word for word, yelling and call I kill you. Oh, my fiance a bitch and I will hit you. And he was yelling that. And so I have, I'm, well, now because of all the weight I've lost, I'm 122 pounds. I'm 5'3". He's a lot bigger than me. And I have a grown man yelling and screaming that he is going to hit me. First off, I wasn't yelling something like, oh, you're a bitch or whatever like that. I just said the why, very matter of factly, said disrespectful to women. And when she said her comment, and I said, and you were a bitch to me and I don't want to have anything to do with you either. I, I'm just having a hard time believing her, and her story does not, in detail, correspond with her witnesses' stories. We're not hearing this. I, I don't know. I wasn't there, and I don't know about the rest of the hearing, but that, that's just the way it strikes me. Again, like, it, that's all it was. And so she didn't even come and do anything to anyone. She wasn't involved. I patched this together. There may be a little gap there, but we... I may have missed a, a, a little bit, but I I think we have most of this hearing. Jason did all this to me. A man on a woman did this to me. And that was what was so shocking and upsetting because I didn't do anything to this man. And the next thing I know, I get punched in the face and then hit with a liquor bottle. Where was she now? Uh Th that's just hard to believe. That's just really hard to believe. She's saying that she knows this guy, but he just comes up and, and attacks her with a liquor bottle. It just doesn't make sense to me. It's possible. I don't know. It just, it just, it just, it just, it, it just sets off my BS detector. That, that's all I'm saying. How far away distance wise was Nicole Frazier from you when, when you stood up? Eight to 10 feet, all the way, all the way across. She wasn't anywhere near me. <laughs> okay. All right. After um, Mr. Burns strikes you in the face and hits you with the bottle, what happened next? Um, after that, um, so he hit me with the bottle, that, and then I got... That um, would help explain it, he, if that's he true. Hit, he hit me right here. 
going all the way across with the bottle. And then I got pulled down by him onto the ground. And then what happened next is, so he's on top of me, right? But how do I explain it? So like, um, I'm on the ground and then Jason's on top of my body with my husband in a headlock on top of him. So it's you like a it? layered effect. Like the bottom Oreo, I don't know how, I'm just trying to explain it to give you a visual. Like the bottom Oreo piece is me, Jason's in the middle, the cream, and he's got my <laughs> husband by a headlock like this, like this, and he's on top. And I, all I can see- All right, this Oreo sandwich analogy is, is awkward as hell. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's a lot going on here, but that- <laughs> Describing someone as the cream in the Oreo sandwich fight, it's just, I, no. He is my husband's face and his eyes are like this and they're not moving. Not just like not blinking, but like they're like, like they're like this and the pupils aren't moving and there's blood coming all the way down his face, um, the, his face and neck and everything. Uh, ultimately, it would be all over my jeans and stuff too. Um, but let me, let me, Miss Edney, let me ask because I want to clear something up. You said that Mr. Burns had um, your husband in a headlock. Oh, but on top of me. And so he was pushing his back against me, his body weight against me with my husband in a headlock on top of him. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. So, like, so, like, I'm going to use Miss Fowler's word. She now is in a thruple. And not only does she choose to be in a thruple, and she's shacked up in the bed with the thruple. Now, if anybody thinks this is okay, I am in the wrong world. I hate to use my dog, but like, so if Jason were my dog, right? He's on top of me holding my husband in a headlock on top of him. So it's a layered, okay. like a layered body effect. It, it it's a layered body effect Oreo sandwich thing we got going on here, Judge. You, you understand, right? Am I okay. explaining that visually? No, you're, you're explaining, uh-huh. Okay. All right. Sorry at about any, that. Go ahead. At any point in time, did you threaten to hit Mr. Byrne or Mrs. Frazier? No, absolutely not. Like I said, I only got up because I had a man yelling that he said, I'm going to hit you. And the last thing I'm going to do is have a man yell, who's huge and much bigger than me already, yell at me and say he's going to hit me. And I stood up and, you know, had to address it. And I said, no. I said, hit me, you're not going to hit me. And that is when, well, he hit me. He punched me and then swung the, punched with one hand and then immediately swung Judge, the at this point, it's, it's asked and answered, Your Honor. I think we've covered this now three times. Go ahead, Ms. Edney, finish, finish up. Mrs. Um, Edney, did you have any concern about your husband's well-being while this was going on? Objection, Your Honor, relevance. Ms. This is an allegation of a battery on Ms. Edney. I'm not sure what that would be relevant for. Uh, Mr. McLaughlin, that's not relevant at all. Actually, Your Honor, matter. it, it would be self-defense justification for why she bit him when he was laying on top of her. And I've got the case law. Um, okay. I can They're conceded that they determined that they cannot find oh, out who the no. initial aggressor is. Where was I? May, may, may I go to the bathroom? And that oh, night, my face did was. not bruise. My arm from the bottle bruised all the way across, about like four inches by like three I inches. I lost the, the place. Okay. But that's not the point. Got it. But this is not this is not a trial. This is a warrant application. What are what what um which arm do you allege that uh I gotta find is it. not relevant for the court to inquire? Sundays they're they're not actually open, even though it says headquarters out from underneath it. And, and because he's on top of me, his head is right there. That's what I did. I was doing whatever I could to get this man off of me. I couldn't breathe. Did we do this already? All right. And my husband didn't look like he was even breathing or even conscious. He, his eyes were, his eyes were like this and like not moving. Like they weren't even like looking at anything. Oh Lord. And, Help me find my, space, after, my spot. Um, people are pulling Mr. Byrne off. What happened next? What do you mean, like, after the... Yeah, immediately after. Um, uh, the guys told Jason that they, that he needed to leave, 
and we're escorting him and Nicole there. And Rod brought me into the kitchen um, to get me like ice packs for my arm, for my cheek, my face. Um, he had to go plug my husband's um, nose because it was gushing blood everywhere still, not only outside on the porch and over like our clothes and, and, and the porch and everything, but, but he was still gushing blood. So Rod also plugged um, Peter's nose, like, you know, with like tissue like this. Um, and oh. then I just literally just started just crying and was in hysterics. And ultimately further into the night, I was having really bad chest pains. Like I felt like I was having a heart attack and I was at uh, our other friends uh, who's a nurse's, um, house. And I said, look, like everyone in my family has died from, from heart attacks, early age heart attacks. And I said, I think I'm having a heart attack. And I said, I like, I think I'm literally going to die. I said, it feels like something's going in, squeezing my heart around my heart. And that's when they, somebody, I don't even know who called Rod and brought him back over because my chest was hurting so bad that it felt like somebody was squeezing it out of the cavity because I was just in so much shock that like a man would sit here unprovoked for no reason, just say, I'm going to hit you and then punch me in the face and then hit me with a bottle. Why didn't you call the police right away? Um, I, I was having literally a mental and emotional breakdown. I, I couldn't even, I was having just a hard breathing to, I don't know if it's just from hysterics or like what the physical reason is. I was having trouble after him having so much weight on me. Like I was having a really hard time breathing. Um, <laughs> Okay, I'm assuming that's a yes. Okay. I took care of him. The Judd and the uh, Steve guy, they had um, taken care of, of them and got them away and, and came back and said, they're gone. I was worried about my physical well-being once like the threat was gone. I was worried about me. I could barely even talk to anybody there, much less police. I was worried about my physical well-being. And I was in a lot of pain. I got hit with a bottle. It felt like getting hit with a baseball bat by a man. Like I had no, the police was not my priority. Me, me was my priority because I thought later on I was, I couldn't calm down. I couldn't stop having the like just pain in my chest. Today, Your Honor, my health is in jeopardy right now. What's up? I have IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. Mm -hmm. And what what's been going on? Very stressful. I'm bleeding inside, ma'am. Cavity. I couldn't stop. My concern wasn't filing a police report. My concern was, am I going to have a heart attack because of what this man just did to me? Um, after after September twenty third, twenty twenty two, was there a time when you actually did speak with law enforcement? Yeah, as soon as I could, I didn't even go to sleep that night because I couldn't, and my husband didn't either. And then as soon as the Google said that the police departments were open, we went to try and go file, but the Google has the times wrong. On Sundays, they're, they're not actually open, even though it says headquarters has hours of operation, it doesn't. But my husband like just stayed there at the back fence parking area, jumping to get somebody's attention and waited for someone to go out for the building to their police car to get someone because he knew like how important it was for me to like talk to someone because of how scared I was. And then they off like got someone from the, I, I can't remember right now, but like the other, another precinct or whatever to come out there because they didn't have Manning whatever and, and take, and take something and take something down. And then they said like that I would have to go and, you know, f file things and stuff. And that's what started, and then that's what started this whole process. Okay, so what, after you talked to law enforcement, <laughs> she has to file things and stuff. Enforcement, <laughs> you were told you would need to file an application. Is yeah. that correct? Did law and enforcement that Monday, and I have to do that Monday because they're closed on the weekends too. So I went I, first thing Monday. 
did law enforcement ever interview you at all on September 23rd, 2023? Uh, the, the date it happened? Right. No. I, I didn't call because I, 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 I didn't call them. I went the next day. So I never, I never talked to them that day. I only talked to the man who they ended up getting to come out there from the Lawrenceville. Pre I, I don't know. The, some man, but I, I got a report number for it on Sunday. Okay. After the court um, denied your uh, stalking petition, um, has Mr. Byrne continued to- Yes, Your Honor, completely irrelevant. There is not one iota of relevant evidence as it relates to that or anything for that matter. It is relevant, Your Honor, because she is in fear for her safety and his conduct since is extremely relevant. I think it's important for the court to understand what he's been doing since to help the court frame out and put into perspective what happened that night. First of all, Judge, he's done nothing. Second of all, Your Honor. <laughs> How would you know? Are as, you there? As, as, hey, I'm not talking to you, Ms. McCaws, but what Ms. McCaws said is the issue at hand is whether there was an assault or battery on September 23rd. So- And whether there's- and continuing what, Ms. McCaws, can you just let me finish? We let me finish? And so, Judge, none of this is relevant. The uh, fact Ms. that there's continuing stalking, that he continues to film her, go by her home. Judge, they can file another TPO. That's not what is here to they, be decided tonight. Isn't it funny how Mr. Spiesman doesn't want to be interrupted, but he thinks nothing of interrupting while I'm talking? Isn't it funny, Ms. McCaws? Yes. All right, go Judge ahead, uh, Ms. I'm on, I'm gonna let you delve into it, but please, please make it brief. I will. I I will, Your Honor. What has Mr. Byrne been doing since November thirteenth, twenty twenty three? Yes, ma'am. Immediately within an hour of this happening, he I work for I'm a reporter for Fox Five Atlanta, and he went and tweeted Fox Five Atlanta. Objection, Your Honor. This no, is no, not no, relevant. No, no, this Ms. was Edney. all litigated at a TPO hearing, Your Honor, for stalking that was denied. Now they are trying to effectively create some argument to the court that this is within the scope of an assault and battery that occurred on September 23rd, which it's not. This is completely irrelevant. It's absolutely relevant. I'm not talking about what happened prior at the prior hearing. I'm talking about what's occurred subsequently and why my client is so very afraid of him and what his behavior is. And as the court knows, your ruling can, in fact, conform to uh, the testimony and evidence. And, and it will be very brief what he's been doing since that order entered. Yeah, it's, it's not relevant. There's no relevance to what occurred. On I want to hear a little bit of it. I want to hear a little bit of Mrs. Spitzman. Go ahead. Um, thank not you. much. Sure. Can you let me know where I let off? The, uh, this was just a. Mrs. Edney, you know, listen, listen, listen to the question very. OK. After Judge Davis entered her order. After the stalking hearing, what has Mr. Byrne been doing? Uh, last week, I was driving home and I was coming to the stop sign and I saw him down along the sidewalk with his dog. And of course, I came to a complete stop at the stop sign. He got his phone out. And as I'm driving, he starts filming, laughing and smiling at me and be like, ha, 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 and smiling and laughing and gets his phone out and is filming me driving, driving my car or driving down to my house. He continued that point to be walk another night. Uh, he was walking his dog on a separate occasion and was smiling at me creepily. And I didn't feel comfortable getting out of the car. So I had to call my husband to like come out and, and get me, um, you know, and all of that is in condition to him going to my work, to my friends, to my house, all the objection, other prior- Objection, Your Honor, again, this is all irrelevant. I'm, 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 I'm gonna go ahead and uh, sustain the objection. Okay. I just asked this testimony to be struck, Judge. We've already litigated this whole issue with stalking. Okay, go ahead, Mr. McGraw. Mrs. I mean, do you fear for your safety? Objection, Your Honor. Re irrelevant. Her, whether she's fearful of her safety in a private warrant application is not relevant for the court to inquire on. If this were a protective order hearing, Judge, it would be wholly relevant, but not if there is an act of violence on September 23rd. Now, I want to kind of stick to the facts. We're talking about November, excuse me, September 23rd, please. Yes, Your Honor.
that's all I have for Ms. Edney at this time, Your Honor. Okay. All right, Mr. Spitzman. All right. Ms. Edney, you consider Dr. Givens a friend, right? Yes. You believe that his testimony was honest and truthful, right? Yes. Okay. And you're aware that when he testified, he specifically said to you, said that you stated your fiance is a bitch to Ms. Mr. Byrne, right? You heard that, didn't you? That, that's not what I said. No, no, no. That's not what my question was, Ms. Edney. It's going to be important you listen to my question. You heard Dr. Gibbons, who you trust, testify that he heard you say to Mr. Byrne that your fiance is a bitch, correct? He might be mixing up what he said to me. No, 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 no. That's again not my said, question. I never said Did that. You your hear, I didn't know that they were engaged. I didn't. Uh, this attorney does a really good job holding it together through this whole hearing. I'm more impressed as I watch this completely. I didn't know Ms. that they were even engaged. Miss, Miss said, let's try this again. Did you hear Dr. Gibbons testify that you said to Mr. Byrne, your fiance or your girlfriend is a bitch? Did you or did you not hear him testify to that? I didn't hear that exact phrasing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're saying he didn't testify to that. I don't remember this question. I'm hearing. I don't really, I, I'm not keeping a record of what everyone's saying. I'm just here to tell my oh. truth. Okay, all right, I got it. Okay. You'd agree with me that Dr. Gibbons provided accurate and truthful testimony, correct? Objection, Your Honor. Not accurate. Answer. It's not all Ms. accurate. Edney, not, wait okay, so, all right. So, so, Hold on, Ms. Edney. Hold on, you got to. What happens when your attorney makes an objection? Just be quiet, okay? Let me get okay. a ruling on that. Go ahead. What was the objection, Mr. Claus? Asked and answered. No, okay. never answered, Judge, but asked. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and allow it. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Miss Adney. You would agree with me that Dr. Gibbons provided honest and truthful testimony, correct? She answered that, Your Honor. It's no, been asked. Judge, and answered. Judge. Okay. You would agree with me that Dr. Gibbons stated that you called Mr. Burns' fiance a bitch, correct? I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I'm not keeping record of what everyone's saying. Oh. I, I don't know. This is a long, I've been sitting here for several hours now listening to things. I don't know what everyone has said. Okay. Word for word. You're, like, I, I don't know that. Yeah, well, we do and we have a transcript. But you're saying you didn't say that, right? No, I said, because you were a bitch to me last year too, I don't want to have anything to do with you. Uh, he said okay. to me, Call my, after that, he said, call my fiance a bitch and I will hit you. Okay. That's what and Jason said to me. You're aware that Jason doctor, said to me. You're aware that Dr. Gibbons never. Yeah, he probably did say that to you because you called her a bitch. Or testified to any of that, correct? Well, I don't know what he heard or what he thought. So, so Ms. Edney, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask yes or no questions. When I say correct, it's correct or incorrect. Okay. So we did this the last time. I need you to answer the question, then you can explain. Okay. So you're aware that Dr. Givens never testified that you said any of that, correct? Objection, Your Honor. It's been asked and answered. But she won't answer and anything. Frankly, Your Honor, this is just argumentative. This is what, what he would be arguing in closing. Yeah, just, they're like, trying to put my client in jail. Ms. McLaws, hold on. Ms. McLaws, I gave you a lot of leeway. You talked about things in the past. You talked about what, what, what a present situation may be and because of other incidents that, um, future incidents that have occurred with Mr. Um, uh, Burns. So I'm going to allow him to ask the question. Okay, we gotta we got to keep it fair on both sides now. Go ahead. You recall that Dr. Gibbons never mentioned anything about the statements that you just made, correct? What what statements? I'll move on, Judge. I think the court gets the point. Um, no, I, right. I just don't know what statements. You, you guys all talk and then- Hey, Miss Edney, I'm moving on. Miss Edney, I'm moving on, okay? I'm trying gonna, to answer. I just need to- We're going to move question. on. We're just... moving on, okay? All right. Dr. Gibbons testified that you were five feet away from him at the time that there was a verbal dispute. Was that correct? I don't believe his distance was correct, no. Okay, Dr. Givens indicated that you moved five feet or toward Dr. Givens after the comment was made about you being a bitch. Is that correct or incorrect? That's incorrect. Okay, so Dr. Givens testimony that you were five feet away from him and that you moved five feet toward Mr. Byrne is all incorrect, correct? What I was saying earlier to the first question is it wasn't all accurate because okay. his distances is off. And that's what okay. I was saying originally when you, may I finish please? 
what, when you originally had asked me, is he being honest? I think he's being honest from his perspective, but from my perspective and from what I am telling you is I believe his distances were off and he was coming towards me as Jason was coming towards me. I got up. I maybe took a step up, but I did it to turn and face Jason because I'm in a, a different direction. So when I then turned and faced it, Jason with Rod in between us, I wasn't coming at anyone aggressively. I stood up and said, hit me. You're not going to hit me. You're not going to hit me. And then I got hit by a man through another man. Okay. Thank you for telling me that. What are, what, what, um, which arm do you allege that uh, Mr. Byrne hit you with? He hit me. He punched me with his right hand. Okay. He and his... Me. And then the other hand, the other hand hit, swung and hit me with the bottle. Okay, so what hand did he have the bottle in? The other hand. No, not the other hand. Left or right? Which one? He hit me. He, I'm facing this way. He's facing that way. He hit me with his right hand and his left hand, which is the other hand, he then swung around and hit me with the sealed liquor bottle. Okay, so he said, you're saying that his left arm struck which side of your body? No, I'm saying he punched me with his right arm in the in face my to my left cheek right here to my left cheek underneath my eye. And then with his other one, he hit and hit me with the bottle and slammed it into me. He swung it. It was swinging just like you would swing like this. It was like a one, two punch. It was like, boom, there. And then boom, like that. Okay. And, it's and a how boom, far, how boom. How far you were away from Dr. Gibbons at the time this occurred? I don't know. Okay, you don't know. All right. And then at that point in time, then you indicated that there were some pretty substantial verbal exchanges before physical contact occurred, right? From Jason arriving onto the porch. No, no, so my, I just need a yes or no question. Seconds. It was about 45 seconds from him from him getting onto the porch to that him. Wasn't, him Sandy, that 45. wasn't my question. It's really important yes, you listen to my question just say yes or no if it's a yes or no question. You would agree that there was a number of verbal exchanges prior to there being any physical contact, correct? What do you mean by, can you define verbal exchanges? He said something to you, you said something to him, he said something to you, and you and said something to him. And then he threatened me, and then he, and it ended. No, 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 no. so is that correct or incorrect? Girl, she has a right to explain her answer. She doesn't and answer. She has a right to explain her answer. Judge, she, she just explains. Him. Is there an objection, Ms. Claus? Sorry, Judge. Is that, was that an objection? Yes. Okay. He is interrupting her as she's explaining her answer. She Mrs. has Spencer, a right I'll, to finish. I want to go and let her explain. Go ahead. Listen. Judge, I would just ask that she be directed to answer a question, yes or no, and then explain. That's it. That's I ask yes or no questions. I'm just asking Judge, for a yes or no answer. Judge, I'm doing my I'm really doing my best, Judge. Like this. A, I'm reliving this. B, I have all this going against me, and I'm sitting here as the victim of a crime. Like, this is extremely stressful, and I'm doing the best that I can. I'm not trying to avoid a question. I'm just trying to explain myself. And then he keeps interrupting me and won't let me say anything. And then he says, now answer the question, and then I can't remember the Ms. question. Ms. Andy, Ms. Andy, Ms. Andy, Ms. Andy, please uh, calm down, okay? All right. So um, go ahead, Mr. Spitzman. Ms. Andy, you would agree that you made at least I'm officially out. I'm officially out on her. I, just, I, I don't know what happened, but I don't believe her. There's two comments to Mr. Byrne before he allegedly struck you, correct? No, I mean, one. No, I mean, I have to go back and count it. I said to him, I said to him, because you were disrespectful. Nicole said her reply. And then I said, I don't have anything to do with you either. Well, I said, because you were bitching me last time and I don't want to have anything to do with you either. And then, so I only said one exchange to Jason. And then that's when Jason threatened me and said, call my fiance a bitch and I will hit you. And during this entire time, your husband, Mr. Wayne, just sat on the couch and didn't get up, right? Correct. Okay. And doesn't that strike you as strange that during this heated exchange where a man is allegedly in your face, your husband who cares about you more than anyone in the world didn't get up to intervene or stop it from occurring? There was uh, an exchange, 
Peter didn't need to speak for me. I'm spe I'm speaking for myself. I don't need Peter to speak for me. I don't need a man to speak for me. I can say, no, you can't hit me. I don't have to have a man say that. I can say that on my own two feet, that you are not going to threaten me. Peter doesn't need to do that for me. I don't want him to do that for me. And had we thought that he would have been insane enough to punch me, clearly he would have jumped in earlier. He jumped in as soon as he could to get him and pull him off of me. I don't need Peter to speak for me. I can stand up to a man myself and say, no, you're not going to hit me and attack me. You indicated that um, Mr. Byrne was um, physically holding you down while simultaneously choking holding, your- pushing. I, I'm hoping that's sarcasm. You're not listening to my responses. I said, he's pushing against me. He's not holding me. He's holding and choking my husband and pushing back against me. It's a pull and a push. So it's your testimony that Mr. Byrne is after uh, having a big dramatic breakdown about being attacked by a man earlier and how that's unfair, I, I, which is fine, but pick a side. Holding you down. No, pushing. that's not what I said, sir. Judge, judge I mean, I, I, I just don't even know how to how to ask the question. She's interrupting me. She won't answer my questions. I'll try to Mr. Ms. Ebony, as I told in the beginning, remember I had I had a discussion, is that, listen, we're gonna be respectful. He asked yeah. questions, you answer the questions. That's it, okay? And if there's a yes or no question that you want to explain, you answer the question, no or yes, and then you explain. Okay? That's, it's very simple. Mr. Byrne was, was physically either pushing or holding you down, correct? He was pushing against me, correct. He was also simultaneously choking your husband, correct? Yes. <laughs> and during that entire time, he was... Um, it's your testimony that he was causing such damage to your husband who was on top of him that you felt it appropriate to bite the top of his head, correct? For what he was doing to both me and my husband, correct. So despite the fact that you were under him and there were two men on top of him, he was causing such damage to all parties that you felt that it was appropriate to bite the top of his head, correct? I No, that's incorrect because I never saw Rod on the floor or in the dog pile. I never saw Rod like on the dog pile. My only view. Wait, is the dog pile the same thing as the Oreo? I just, I, I need to know. Viewpoint, and that doesn't mean that he wasn't, but my only viewpoint was Jason's head and my husband's face from the way that he was strangling him on top. That's all I could see from the way that I was positioned on the dog pile. I just, from my viewpoint, couldn't see Rod, but yes, he was also spinning plates and solving a Rubik's cube. This, this guy is good. I couldn't breathe, and I had the weight of two men. That's why I keep saying two on top of me. And then, uh, and then Peter was bleeding, and his eyes weren't moving as he was being strangled by your, your client. Okay, you reported this to law enforcement, didn't you? That's the way I feel. Yes. And you talked to law enforcement on two separate occasions, didn't you? The second time when he came and harassed me and my friends and yelled and cussed. No, 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 Miss Annie, Miss Annie, that's not the question I asked you, okay? No, no, Did you judge. report it, did you report it to law door. enforcement one or two times? No, 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 Judge. No, no, no. Mrs. Enny, hold on, Your Honor. He asked the question. He opened the door for her to I be able to explain. The... He absolutely did on two occasions. She's explaining it. Now he wants to cut ask off. about. You ask about two occasions, so go ahead. Explain those two that, occasions. How many me. times did you call the police away this incident? No, Your Honor, she gets to answer that no, question. No, he I'm yelling. What are you yelling about? Ms. Ms., uh, Mr. Spitzman, let me go ahead and hear what you, the initial question you asked her about the two occasions that she spoke to the police. Did you talk to the police on two occasions related to this incident? Yes. Okay. I May I finish? I talked to them on two occasions. I talked to them on Related Sunday. to this incident. That was related the question. No, yes, no. yes. And may I finish? Can I, may I finish? If it was related to this may incident. I finish? Yes. yes, yes. Open the door. May I finish? Oh, do I stay yeah, Go ahead, please. Judge, go ahead. Judge, I asked Listen, y'all gotta listen. Listen, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. We, we've already got, so far, this hearing has been, has taken almost little, almost three hours. Okay, so uh, with very few breaks in between, um, 
other than take care of some other business that we had before the court. So listen, what I need for you guys to do is be much more civilized and basically ask questions Whoa. and respond to those questions <laughs> so we can get through this evidence. Come on, everybody be nice to each other. <laughs> it's cute. Like, I understand where the judges come from. I actually really like this judge, but I mean, yeah, seriously, that, that, that's not going to happen. Because all this is going back and forth. This is this is going to be ridiculous. What's, and this, what's is a, this, is a, this is a this is a warrant application hearing. This I got it, video. but this is not this is not a trial. This is a warrant application hearing. So please, let's go ahead and move this thing along. And I'm not trying to be one with other Mr. Spitzer. I'm just saying in general that you know, ask the questions. Y'all ask the questions and answer the and and witnesses respond to them. Uh, Judge, I'll I'll try to make this easy. I we, got it. No, I'm. Just, May yes. I respond to the question? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna move on. We're gonna make this easy, okay? When you contacted the police, did you share with them Dr. Given's name and information? Yeah. Um, We've already crossed that bridge. Let's see. Yes, I put on. Yes, I told them that I had witnesses because the first time that I contacted the police was when Peter and I went to the thing. The second time that I contacted the police was that night when Jason came and- Again, this is not, that's not what I asked, Judge. He was I yelling and cussing and saying he was gonna come after Judge, me. He I was asked, who did it? Ms. Ed, Ms. Ed, Ms. Ed, Ms. Ed, Ms. she gave Dr. Gibbons' name. I had Ms. to call Ms. him Miss Abney, I don't want to hear about the other colloquy. I want, I want, and all the other surplus. I want to know the, that question. That's the question he's asking. I said yes or no. Yes. You did give Doctor Given's name to police as a witness, correct? The first time his name. The second time, I told him to talk to him. So, like, I writ, like I wrote it and said, "Here it is." And the second time, um, I verbal, I verbally, I verbally said it the second time. When you talked to the police, you gave them Stephen West's name, didn't you? Um, I, I don't, it, this was so long ago and I filled out so many reports since then. I, I don't, I mean, I'm sure I've included everything as much as I could. I don't, I just don't remember right now. Honestly, okay. I just can't remember. And you're aware that a police report was created based on your report that occurred on September 24th, right? On the 24th or, or the 23rd? The 24th. Is, Are you aware that a police report was created based on your report on September 24th? They made two reports. So is the answer yes? Yes, they made two reports for both okay. incidents. All right, Ms. Cora, can you please bring up exhibit, it would be five that's numbered, dash police report. I mean, you have, are you able to share the screen with us? If I can share screen, I'll, it won't let, like, DeKalb won't let us judge. Oh, okay. So if I could, I would. Unless you can give me share possibility, I can bring it up real quick. But Madam well, Clerk, I'm... hold on. Madam Clerk, can you share your screen? Oh, how do you guys do it? How do you do it? Uh, give me one second. I need to make you a co-host. Yeah, on. maybe a co-host, I think. I can bring oh, it up. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. For Mrs. Feisman. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Is that okay, Judge? Because normally it's yes. either. Okay, just let me Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm okay with that. All right. Okay, just made you co host. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Sorry, we'll take one. All right. Ms. Adney, is this a, an accurate representation of the police yep. report that you filed based on the September 23rd? incident I'll your scroll. honor unless it's a certified copy i'm going to object to him asking her any questions about it there's a probable well, cause hearing, judge here this is a probable this. cause hearing so we can't hearsay evidence is admissible i understand your honor it's like the intro but if i'm it's your just, police report no your honor it's not my police report it's, it's her it's police dead. report well she hasn't identified it as such he just keeps scrolling around I, I, I can't read it. Well, well, ideally he can't he can't have her identified because you just objected to it. Right, it's so, not a certified copy. It doesn't have I'm to. Going, I'm gonna go ahead and allow the police report. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. All right, Miss Edney, I'm showing you us. We'll just call it Exhibit One for ease of use. Is this an accurate representation of the police report that you filed 
on or about September 24th related to the September 23rd incident? I'm scrolling slowly. Um, I need to read. Uh, you get police reports redacted all the time. There, there, there's, there's nothing nefarious there. That's just that, that's just the way you get it when you when you order them a lot of times. What they wrote because I never asked them for a copy because I just gave them I just gave my lawyer the 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 dates and the the incident number. So I've never actually even seen uh, what they printed up. So I mean, no, I need I to read through. To, the I moved to admit as a self authenticating record in a probable cause hearing where hearsay is admissible. Well, we actually have a copy of it that is submitted. And we pull the police reports in conjunction with what's going on. Let me see here. Okay. Okay, Miss Edney, you would agree some with Some of these me. things, they, they wrote oh, some no. of these things wrong. Miss Edney, I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta ask you a question. Miss Edney, you would agree with me that specifically Dr. Given's name, address, and obviously a redacted cell phone number was provided to law enforcement, correct? Yes. You would further agree with me that police officers specifically indicated that they observed a bruise on your right arm, but no other visible injury and no injury to Mr. Wang. We didn't take our clothes off. I did offer to, I did offer to take my clothes off and he could come inside and he said no. Okay. I said I can I can take my pants off, and he said not necessary, and he he stayed out on. But, but Miss Edney, you never testified that there was any injury, <laughs> right? That because this was just me giving the, and I did I did testify that I was injured by him, and we showed all this at the previous. I was just generally willing to take my pants off. That's all I'm saying. Hearing and all the bruises on my butts, my legs, my calves, all of my body. There's pictures and videos of it. And I also volunteered to the police and then to take my clothes off. And then they said no, not to do it. But I took video evidence, photo evidence, and it's all throughout my body too. And that is, I'm a guessing from when he was on top of me. Okay, but you'd agree with me that the police officers indicated that there was no visible any injury to anything but your right arm, correct? That's what the because I had clothes on. Did. Because I had clothes on. Oh, oh okay. Um, did you have something covering your face? No. Okay, so they could have visibly seen your face, and specifically, they indicate that they observed no injury to your face, didn't they? It didn't bruise. Okay. All right. It was after that one-two uh, punch combination from a full-grown man. Where she takes a right, uh, she takes a, a closed fist right, as I understand it, and then a bottle of bourbon with the other hand, as hard as you can. Mm -hmm. Red and swollen the night prior, we iced it, and I took some medicine that night, and my face did not bruise. My arm from the bottle bruised all the way across, about like four inches by like three inches. Okay. But that's not and then the I had all the right? bruises throughout the rest of my body, all up on my butt, my legs, my bottom half Hi. of my body. I offered okay. to take the clothes off, Your Honor, for, for the police, and he said no, that not, not necessary. And I said you could come okay. into my house, and I'll take and I'll take the clothes off for you. All right, but you've never testified. To I'm going to use Miss Fowler's words. She now is in a throne. Up and until just oh, right now, right. other than no, the that's not your true. face. No, no, no. I haven't asked the question other than the injury to your face and your arm. Until just right now, in this hearing, you've never testified to any other injuries, right? That's incorrect. No, that's incorrect. Okay, all right, I'll move on. My my lawyer asked me to identify all the pictures and identify the injuries. Uh, in the last your lawyer did not do that in this hearing, Ms. Adney. I just, I'll move on. You just on. asked in the past if I testified, that's past No, testimony. I didn't at this hearing, Ms. Adney. I said at this hearing, you're not listening to my question, okay? Because those are minor injuries, the main injuries from him. Ms. Adney, Ms. Adney. Ms. Edney, he asked, he asked did, <laughs> about this particular hearing, okay? That's what you got to stick to, all right? Oh, okay. And you're also aware in the police report it indicated that Mr. Wang showed no visible injuries, correct? He had clothes on. All his were beneath his clothes. What was his and face covered specifically? Ms. Edney, let me ask. I wasn't no. Edney. Ms. Edney. She knows because she's been beneath his clothes. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to talk over him. Let him ask the questions. Please. His face was not covered when the two of you met with police, was it? His face, no. His nose was not covered when the two of you met with police, correct? No, he had the blood had stopped by then because that okay. was the next day. Okay. All right.
Ms. Sadney, you indicated you didn't call the police because you were so emotionally distraught, correct? Yes. Okay. You would agree with me that Dr. Givens was around you giving medical attention, right? Yes. Mr. Wang was around you tending to your needs, right? Yes. Was there any other one else? Mr. West was there briefly around you tending no, to your No, I never. I'm sorry, but this hearing contains the phrase, Mr. Wang was around tending your needs, right? <laughs> You're welcome. I never saw okay. Mr. West tending to my needs. He never okay. tended to me. The only people he was tending present. to me. He was present, right? I don't know where Mr. West was at the time. Okay. All right, but none of these people called the police on that evening, right? I wouldn't know if they did or not, but they did okay. it. Come, so. All right. You made a couple of allegations that my client has either filmed you or smiled at you. Have you since Taunting filed? Me. Another, have you since filed another TPO? Yes or no? I didn't get the ruling until today. Have you since filed I another didn't. TPO? Yes no, or no? Because I'm, not because I'm not able to because I didn't find out hey, until this. Thank you, Ms. Edney. That was my question. I'm have explaining why. I'm explaining why. I did, haven't filed another TPO because I only found out that his was turned down right before this hearing today when I talked to my lawyer because our lawyer had never received any email correspondent from the court, from the judge. So I didn't know that I needed to file another TPO or that I had the right to appeal because I didn't know the answer. Is I only found me? this out right before I came here. Sadney, did you call the police when he filmed you or smiled at you? No. Yes, no. I'm sorry, did you answer? Yes, sir, I did. Okay, what was the answer? Did you call the police when he filmed you or smiled at you? No, when he was taunting me, I did not because he was still far enough away from my property at that time that he wasn't breaking what I still thought was a temporary order from Judge Kemp for him to okay. stay away from me. All right. So what you're saying is whatever you're testifying to Mr. Burn did, it wouldn't have even been a violation of the TPO if you had it, right? Objection, Your Honor. That, no, that would call for her to have a legal opinion or a conclusion. She, she's not capable. I agree, but that's exactly the legal opinion or conclusion that she offered. We're rendering. I, I totally agree, Mr. Spitzman. You okay. can't make that determination. All right. So it's your testimony that despite the fact that the police investigated this, talked to you on multiple occasions, that they didn't make the right decision, right? Is that your testimony? I, no, it's not my testimony because um, they all told me every time that they couldn't investigate. They apologized to me and they said, look, we can't investigate this because you, you should have called that night. And they said, if you want this done, you have to go and file something. And then he and then the officer said, look, I can go down there. And if you're really afraid, I'll tell him to leave you alone and I'll talk to him. And I said, yes, please go down there. And I said, well, what do you think is the best thing for my safety? And the officer said, I'll go down there and tell him, you know, that he needs to stay away from you and not come near you. So that is, and I asked the officer, yes, could you please do that? If okay. that's what you think is the best thing in the situation, the officer said, sure, but if you want legal action, you're gonna have to go through these steps. And then I followed those steps from that officer. So they never investigated anything. All they did was came and take reports and took down numbers. Okay. So it's your testimony that they made the right decision by not arresting anyone, right? Objection, no. Your Honor. Again, that would call for a legal opinion and or conclusion she can't this give. And these now, officers aren't I'm even here. For, I'm here for right. I'm, we're here for probable cause, Mrs. Spitzman. So um, right. that's you know, yeah. That's that's yeah. why we're here. Um, all right, Judge. Just want to see if I have anything else. One second, Your Honor. Okay. May I go to the bathroom? <laughs> no, wait. You have to um, wait till he actually finished. He hadn't finished questioning. Not gonna, yeah, I'll be like thirty more seconds, Miss Adney, if that's. <laughs> Most. I, I can wait a minute and a half, yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> what a hero. When you called the police the second time, Rod was at your house, wasn't he? I don't know if he was there when I called, but 
he was there when they came because he said, I'll be available if they need to talk to me. Okay. Nothing further, Judge. But they didn't talk to him. Okay. Nothing further, Judge. Okay. All right, Mr. Brown. May, may, may I go to the bathroom now, Judge? I, I'm, I'm pregnant and I'm, I, I can't hold it anymore. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. But Miss, Miss, Miss McGlaw, I mean, I want to make sure she doesn't have anything. I don't know what she wants to do, Miss McGlaw. I have, I have just a follow couple of follow-up questions, but I'd really like for my client to be able to just go to the restroom real quick. Uh, all right, we'll I mean, take a, take a uh, five-minute break. Thank you, Jet. It's fine. Go ahead. Ms. Edney, what time was it uh, the next day that you met with law enforcement? Um, I don't remember. It was the, it was as soon as the hours were reported, I went there and then we did the whole parking lot thing. Um, I believe they said the hours were around 12. So by the time I finally got someone, probably one ish, I, I don't remember, but as soon as they opened, I went or okay. the Google hours said they opened it. I went. So the police report that's been marked as exhibit one, uh, uh, that would be an, uh, do you think an accurate time frame of when um, you actually met with the officer? Yes. Okay. The first officer of that day. Right. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. All right. Um, oh, anything else, Mr. Bisman? Okay. Do Miss McLaws, do you have any other witnesses? No, Your Honor. Okay, no other witnesses. Okay, uh, Mr. Spitzman. Judge, pr prior to entertaining my case in chief, here's what I would request the court consider, is I would consider, I would ask your, your honor to consider whether there's sufficient evidence to proceed. Um, if your honor finds that there's not sufficient evidence to proceed now that they've completed their case in chief, we'll abandon our case in chief, meaning we won't pursue any warrants. But so I'd like to argue that, and if your honor you know, can't make a ruling at this time, we'll put off our case. But I think that there is um, insufficient evidence, Judge, for this court to find in any reasonable way that there's probable cause uh, for an actual crime to have been committed. As it stands, Judge, um, PC is defined as reasonably trustworthy information sufficient in itself to warrant a belief by a man of reasonable caution that a crime is being committed. Um, it's not beyond a reasonable doubt, but it is much higher than a coin flip. Judge, what I'd share with your honor is you have two independent witnesses that they called that are not biased, that they're going to present to you as reliable and credible witnesses. One of the witnesses said it's quite possible my client acted in self-defense, which would bar prosecution. Another one of those witnesses indicated a number of facts that Miss Edney herself have completely contradicted. In fact, Judge, the reason why law enforcement came to the conclusions they came to is because everything is contradictory. Her herself said, Dr. Gibbons was never present. I never spoke to the police. He says he's never present. He's never spoken to the police. And all of a sudden we find out that he was at the house the second time the police show up. Specifically, the police report indicates that they investigated fully, that they noticed no injuries outside of one to Miss Edney's arms. And then Gibbons himself says that she stands up, she calls my client's fiance a bitch, she approaches him at a rapid pace, and that he indicates that he responds directly to that judge. There's just not enough evidence here, as your honor should hear the evidence that has been presented. And again, our goal is not to put Ms. Edney in jail, but I think that the problem that your honor is gonna face if we proceed past this into our case in chief is that it is going to be a situation where your choice is gonna be both or none. And we're suggesting to your honor at this point in time that we will abandon our case in chief because we don't believe that they have met their burden while it is lower than beyond a reasonable doubt, there is so much contradictory evidence across the board. The bottle didn't break. The injuries were inconsistent. The facts as they related and they occurred were inconsistent. It makes no sense whatsoever. And again, the most important piece of this judge is DeKalb County Police investigated this on multiple occasions. They took reports from Mr. Byrne. They took your reports Honor, I'm going to object to Mr. Spiesman arguing uh, uh, arguing a case about what law enforcement did or didn't do. You have They didn't arrest. That's the that's the conclusion. Your Honor, no, that's not the only conclusion. And you never heard from any of those witnesses. That's not what and the police report says. 
the officers to come to court to explain Ms. McLaws, Ms. McLaws, their reasoning. Ms. Ms. Laws, I will, I, will, I will implore upon you to allow him to finish. Then you can make those same make one. Yeah, no kidding. It's an argument. The the, the, the there's testimony that 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 was the the result, and he's basically making a motion for directed finding at this point, which is an appropriate thing to do. And then and then you, what she's saying as an objection, you can say as an argument uh, on the other side. Whatever arguments you want to make, okay? Yes, Your Honor. That's how it goes. Okay, Judge, I, I understand why we're here, but the reality is, is law enforcement investigated this. They talked to everyone. The names are in the police report. They indicated what they saw and they concluded immediately after the allegations occurred or within 24 hours that there just wasn't enough evidence. And it wasn't based on the fact that Ms. Eddy didn't call the police immediately. It was based on the fact that everything was contradictory. And the reality is, Judge, is that we can sit here for another hour and a half and we can go through our entire case in chief and you can imagine what you'll hear your honor but they did not meet their burden i'll also note that they rested judge and they did not even establish venue that this occurred in DeKalb county that is required as a matter of law to issue a warrant for probable cause that they established jurisdiction which they did not do there is no judicial finding of that at no point in time did they indicate an address at no point did they indicate it occurred in DeKalb county that is criminal prosecution 101 they didn't do it. So in the alternative, Your Honor, I'd ask that you find that there's not sufficient evidence based on a lack of venue and dismiss this case and allow us all to move along. That's a good argument. They failed to meet the burden on a, on a prime element. And, and if you think that's ticky tack, it's not. Yeah, cases go down for things like that all the time. Ms. McLaws. First, Judge, I'll, I'll, I'll address the venue issue. The very question I asked Dr. Givens is what his address was, where he was, and, and what the date was on September 23rd, 2023. He gave you his address. His address is located in DeKalb County, so you very clearly have already heard evidence about where the crime was when it occurred and, in fact, occurred in DeKalb County. Um, Your Honor, we have proven sufficient evidence, more likely than not, that a crime occurred. What is the crime? A battery. Official Code of Georgia Annotated 16.523 states, one, subsection one, um, intentionally makes physical contact of uh, an insulting or provoking nature with the person of another, or two, intentionally causes physical harm to another. What you heard, Your Honor, is Dr. Givens stated emphatically more than one time my client never raised her hand at all to exactly. mr Byrne or to mrs fraser who was behind him um they assert that that's uh that's their defense that's been their defense all along that mr Byrne was acting in self-defense but that's not what dr Givens said she never raised her hand and that's exactly what my client said um your honor the evidence that you've heard is that Mr. Byrne punched my client in the face and then hit her with a, a bourbon bottle. Doesn't matter if it broke or not. It doesn't matter at all. He hit her hard enough. It left a mark. Dr. Givens had to uh, administer medical treatment. More likely than not, we have met our burden that he committed a crime. And the importance of Mr. West uh, testimony, Your Honor, is Mr. Byrne is anticipated when he testifies, he's going to tell you, I never hit her. So then you're going to believe, you. then you have a question, why then would Mr. Byrne make a statement to Mr. West that I hit her? He was coming up with a reason to explain away why he punched a woman in the face and then hit her in the arm. We most certainly have, just on the bare facts alone, proven out our case. Now, I always find an interesting judge when people say, well, law enforcement didn't arrest, but you didn't hear from them. Why? Why didn't they arrest? Could be. Oftentimes they hear he said, she said, because they didn't come out that night. Maybe it was shift change and they didn't feel like it. But Dr. Gibbons told you he was never interviewed by law enforcement. And my client told you as far as when she was there, these cops didn't do a thorough investigation. They came out or they got stopped rather by my client, a parking lot said, all right, what happened to you? 
and took down a report and then said, like they often do, we weren't there. We haven't talked to anybody. This is how you go get a warrant. And that's exactly what my client did. And I think it's interesting that if they had law enforcement to support what they're saying, that basically they just didn't even believe my client is the argument, then why aren't they here? Well, that's the question. well, the big the question is, that's why we're here right now, because right. Uh, ideally one has an opportunity, whether the officers have issue a, issue a, uh, a warrant or not, or find probable cause, they have an, a person has an opportunity to bring this matter before this court. You saw in previous hearings, um, very similar situations. And so it's my job to, to make a determination whether or not there is sufficient evidence uh, and sufficient probable cause in this matter to issue a warrant. Uh, right now, um, I'm going to deny uh, Mr. Spitzman your motion, um, and we're going to go ahead and move forward. Okay. We'll call Mr. Byrne, Judge. Okay. Your Honor, may I have? I think the attorney was wise to bring the to bring that motion. I think the the judge should deny it because there are issues of fact. Um, I, because I don't believe Brittany. I don't believe word that's coming out of her mouth doesn't mean that she didn't testify to it. So there, so you still have to weigh that testimony. So I, I would probably do that too, reluctantly, because I don't want to hear any more in the case if I'm the judge. But I, all of this makes sense to me. Just one moment, I'm sorry. I've got to put my dog outside. He was not behaving and you, nobody should have to listen to that. Can can I have just one moment if yeah, you don't mind? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm so sorry for the interruption. I apologize again, Your Honor. Thank you. You're good. Mr. Byrne, I just remind you that you're sworn. Can you please unmute? All right. Um, Mr. Byrne, how do you know the uh, petitioner, Miss Adney? Um, neighbor, about 10 houses away, and former friend. Um, had you, how would you describe your relationship with Miss Adney you know, prior to the past year or so? non-existent oh prior to the past year and a half no we were we were close we we're we were very close um me and her husband were very close nicole my fiance and uh miss edney were very close uh we had a, a nice four person french would you, would you call it a throuple sure. okay. have you had any contact with her over the past year uh before september 23rd before, say, yeah. before september 23rd had you had any contact with her over the year leading up to it any particular reason why we're not friends anymore did you ever call her or contact her no did you ever go over to her house and ring the doorbell no as far as you kind of existed was miss edney even part of your existence objection your honor leading i didn't lead him to an answer it's just a yes or no answer but that's definition of leading no, no, it's not. That's not. That's not a definition of weeding. Just like your definition of probable cause was incorrect too. It's not true. All right, Mrs. Bisman, go ahead. I'll ask a better question, judges, so we can Please. move it along. All right. <laughs> when was the last time you had seen Miss Sedney prior to September twenty third? Year and a half ago, we went to Iceland together for about ten days. How long? Okay. And and who who joined you on that trip? Objection, uh, relevant. Fiance. No, I'm going to allow him to answer that, Mr. McLaws. Go ahead. You, you said your fiance, and who went with Miss Edney? My fiance, Nicole, uh, Miss Edney, and Miss Edney's husband, Mr. Wang. How would you describe your relationship with Mr. Wang? It's great. We we're basically best friends. Okay. Did you ever work out with him? <laughs> yeah, in his garage. Why did you laugh like that? He's a strong guy and uh, he's he's the amount of weight he can lift is pretty impressive okay. does he weigh more than you it's it's hard to say because i'm taller than he is but he's definitely has more body mass than i do uh, body mass in a good way not in a bad way okay. september 23rd 2023 you recall that evening i mean they don't come weighing for nothing <laughs> yes okay um Sorry. Were you ever sorry. invited over to Dr. Gibbons' house? <laughs> yes. What were the circumstances of the I should say this just to cut through it. Did you have any aware? Did you were you aware that Miss Edney would be there? No. 
would, would that have deterred you or caused you to go? Would that have impacted your decision? Highly unlikely we would have went. We most likely would have stayed home. Okay. Um, and did you bring anything with you to Dr. Gibbons' house? Yes, a bottle of bourbon. All right. Um, was it a plastic or a glass bottle? Glass. All right. And just why don't you just tell me what happened when you got there? So Dr. Givens is my direct next door neighbor. Our front door, front window overlooks his uh, backside patio uh, where everyone was. Um, Nicole and I we were invited earlier in the day um, or maybe the day before. I'm not sure. Uh, Nicole and I walked over there. We bypassed his front door and went around to where the patio was, where his TV was, where the football game was on. As soon as we turned the corner to enter the patio, we saw Miss Edney, Mr. Wang, and Dr. Givens sitting on the back patio. And um, Nicole and I had like a little powwow, like, uh-oh, you know, we don't really want to be associated with them. We don't really want to have anything to do with them. But we're here, we've been seen. Let's go, let's have a drink, let's be social, let's go home. That was the plan. One drink, go home. Um, came to the back patio, said hi to Rod, gave him a hug. Rod gave Nicole a hug, um, said hi to Peter. Peter said hi back, said hi to Brittany. Miss Abby, she didn't say anything to me. That was fine. Um, I presented Rod the bottle of bourbon that I brought him. Rod's a big bourbon guy. Um, I, I'm, I, I'm a good collector. So as an appreciation here, I brought you this bottle, picked it out from the basement. Um, let's, let's crack it. Let's try it. I asked Peter, if you want, Mr. Wang, if you wanted some, he said, no. Um, and I asked him, do you want to try this? Nothing. And I mean, I, I casually said, you don't have to ignore me. And she said something along the lines are, you know, I can do whatever I want. Um, Nicole said to Rod, like, do you see the way she talks to people? Something along those lines. At that point, and I quote, Your Honor, Miss Edney said, let me just make sure I'm saying this absolutely correctly. Let's get it right. Miss Edney said, pointed to my girlfriend, and you bitch, I'll say whatever I want. To that I responded with, do not call her a bitch. At that point, Miss Eddie stood up, approached us, came within about a foot of my face. At this time, Mr. Gibbons was not in the middle. Dr. Gibbons was not in the middle. I have the bottle of bourbon in one hand and I kind of put my hand out as to say, that's it. We're not getting any closer. Like you have reached your limit. We are not getting any closer. You're not gonna enter mine and Nicole's physical space. At this point, Miss Edney slaps the bottle of bourbon out of my hand and reaches her hand back to hit one of us. And what, do you do away. Away. And what do you do in response to that? I pushed her away. Okay. It, it, it is interesting to hear the pre-Oreo part of this. Did you punch her in the face? No, no, Your Honor. Did you smack her with a bottle? No. And then once you push her away, what happened? What does everyone else do? To the best of my recollection, because I was busy getting tackled by her husband, I want to say that Rod went inside to get his friend, Attorney West, and her other neighbor, Judd, that I'm not sure what his last name is. Her husband was on top of me and him and I were wrestling around on the ground. He was on top, I was on top, he was on top, I was on top. It, 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 was, it was a wrestling match. While her husband had me pinned into the corner, Miss Edney bit me in the head. I was defenseless. I was pinned in the corner by her husband who was much stronger than I am. And I was bit in the head. It All right, so let me, let me ask you a question about that. Did you, did, um, did you capture a photo of the injury you sustained? I did. I 
washed my head first. I wish I would have taken a photo before washing my head, but yes, there, there is a, a photo of the bite marks on my head. Did the bite cause uh, you to bleed? Yes. Did it cause a laceration? Yes. And who bit you? Miss Edney bit me. All right, Judge, um, I'm going to move to, well, I'll, I'll, I'm showing you what's been marked as exhibit number two. Whose head is that? That is my head. All right. And is that photo an accurate representation of your head? <laughs> yeah, my, my, my head that is lacking hair these days. I hear you. Um, uh, and, and has this picture been edited, altered, adjusted, deleted, or changed in any way? No, it is not. All right. Move to admit number two, Judge. No objection. No objection. No objection. Okay. And just admit it. Thank you. Mr. Brown, can you identify wh where the injury is on this picture? Uh, top, where it's the right side of my head, you can see the tooth marks in the moon shape pattern. And to the bottom, you can see the abrasions on my head for where that's probably where I was pinned down by Mr. Wang with my head against the floor. Okay. Um, when you were pinned down by Mr. Wang, were you able to move? No. Were you able to? I mean, I was able to move. I was able to wiggle, but my hands were 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 tied up. Were you were you trying to harm, or were you able to harm Miss Edney in that position? No, I was defenseless. Okay. Um, did you suffer any injury? Any other injuries? My arm was very badly bruised. Um, it took about a month before I had full range of motion in it again. I I never got it checked out. Um, but there was a pretty significant bruise on my left arm. All right, I'm showing you what that was the marked as exhibit three. What is that a picture of? That is my arm. That was taken. Um, the incident was Saturday night. That was taken Monday night. That's when I first noticed the bruise. I got out of the shower and I'm like, wow. And it just got progressively worse over that. Bruises don't happen overnight. Bruises take days before they really show up. And that what was, was that several days from? after. Sorry, well, is, is, is that, um, did you, did you, is that, that's a photo of your arm? Has the photo been edited, yes. adjusted, deleted, or changed in any way? No, that's my left arm. All right, move to admit three, Your Honor. No objection. Very no objection. All right, and, and who caused, are you aware as to what, what or who caused those injuries to your arm? It, it must have been when I was wrestling on the ground with uh, Miss Edney's husband. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, now, after it, now, eventually, did did the scuffle come to an end? Yes. And what happened? Um, and, and I will ask you this: during the scuffle, at any point in time, um, what? Well, I'll do it this way: what What happened to the whiskey bottle during the scuffle? I know it didn't break because the next day when I was walking the dog, I saw Mr. Givens and I asked him if he wound up opening it that night or Dr. Givens, if he wound up opening that night and he said, uh, he did not open it. He still has it. He did not try it. Okay. Um, and after the, uh, the scuffle ensued, what did you do? Uh, Nicole and I went home. Um, we took a picture Well, I, I washed my head. Uh, we took a picture of the bite mark, and then we called the police. Okay. Did the police respond that evening? They did. Okay. And did you give a statement um, as to what occurred to law enforcement? I did. Okay. And was that statement accurate and representative of the injuries and the, that you sustained in the fight that occurred? Yes. Okay. And what, why did why did you call the why did you call the police? Everyone's alleging that you know you were the aggressor and you were the violent individual. Why did you call the police? Because we were the ones that were attacked. Miss Edney attacked us. Miss Edney verbally assaulted my fiance. Miss Edney approached us. Miss Edney tried to hit me or my fiance. And then when I was defenseless, pinned on the ground by her husband, Miss Edney bit me in the head. It didn't just bite me to bite me. It didn't bite me because she was afraid. I was pinned down, defenseless. She bit me so hard in the head, I drew blood. 
that is not okay. But was it, let me ask you this. Now, the, you, you've heard the testimony that you were on top of Miss Edney holding her down while you were simultaneously choking her husband. Um, is that an accurate representation of what occurred? No, it's not. And it's it's pretty far-fetched to think that I can take on uh, Dr. Gibbons, who is much larger than I am, our neighbor Judd, who is much, much larger than I am, and Mr. Wang, who may not be as tall as I am, but is much stronger than I am. Um, unless I was an octopus, it would be pretty difficult to have that many arms going in that many directions all at once. And if you were choking or holding down Miss Edney, would it be feasible that she could actually bite? Those arguments more, I'm a plus than I'm an octopus. I get it. Bite your head? No. <laughs> okay. How is it that she could have bitten your head then? Because I was pinned on the ground by her husband. Okay. I was pinned. Like I, she was to my, I was in the corner and she was to my right and she bit me for no right. reason other than to just bite me. Did you receive an audio recording of the statement that you gave to law enforcement? Yes. And is that through the open records request that you made? Yes. Through their website. All right. I'm going to judge. Um, I mean, I'd like to move to admit four, which is 13 minute audio from the, the police report that Mr. Byrne made. Any objection, Mr. McCalls? Um, I haven't heard it, so I don't know yet, Your Honor. I'll play it and you guys just let me know. Judge, can I please publish it? Yeah, go ahead and publish, please. Can you hear that, Judge? Nope. No audio? None. Uh, no, I'm good. Nothing? What's, uh, tell me what's going on. Can you hear that, Judge, or no? I can't try to play it again. I'm here. All right. I just want to, if we can get it, I'd like to. It's inaudible as far as I'm concerned. I can't hear it. Okay. We, we did provide it to the court. I don't know if the court has the ability to pay what would be exhibit two. Well, the problem is that if, if I'm, I'm hearing about the same situation that you're hearing on the way, how you just published it. I can barely hear it. Well, I think judge, you would have to listen to it, I guess, on your, on your computer. Um, and you know, I, I can move on and then we can see if the court continue exhibit two. I don't know how else to do it, Judge. I mean, we sent it over to the court earlier today. That, that, that today. What do you mean, Exhibit Two? The Exhibit Two was the. Well, I know what I, I labeled it when I sent. But we sent it. We sent a uh, exhibit that is. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Police, so the, right. the court would have it if she's able to bring it up. So I'll let right. her look into that if you don't mind, Judge. All right, go ahead. All right, okay. Um, and so um, when you reported uh, the incident to police, how did you report it? What did you tell them? We told them that we were assaulted. We told them that we went to Mr. Gibbons' property. And the main reason we called, yeah, sure, the injuries, but we know what Miss Edney is capable of. We know what her resources are. And we needed to be on record saying what happened. Here's our side of the story. Before Miss Edney and all her friends got together with her attorneys, who didn't call the police the night of so they can collaborate their story together. Your Honor, I'm going to object. We needed to call I'm the cops. I'm a, Judge, I'm going to object to this. Okay, Come so. On, Mr. So Mr. Burns. What? Yeah, Mr. Burns, focus on why you called the police, not why you think they didn't, okay? So just share with me why you called the police. We were attacked. Me and my fiance were attacked by Miss Edney. Okay. One second, Judge. That may be it for me. Let me just check. And you, you, you identified the home that you were attacked at. Did you identify yes. the home you were attacked at? Yes. Did you identify the individual that lived there? Yes. And did you tell them his name is Rod Givens and this is his address? Yes. You gave them all of that information. I did. Yes. Now, if you were the, the aggressor and you were the individual that caused this fight, would you have given that information to him? 
that's why this testimony is so hard to hear how I'm just being slandered and how I'm getting all this fights in the community and how I'm attacking Miss Edney and how I'm screaming at her or taking videos of her when I'm walking the dog and how I'm, I'm stalking her, how it, it just hurts me to the core because I'm not that person. Everyone wants to hold Dr. Gibbons in this huge, this high esteem because he's a medical provider. Your, Your Honor, Honor, I'm also Your Honor, a medical I'm going to object to this. Your this Honor, I have a medical license in the Mr. 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 Burns, Mr. Burns, that's not so, relevant. Okay, let's, okay. Mr. Burns, let's, let's move on, okay? Um, all right. Uh, one more second here. Let me just double check. How did you feel when uh, Miss Edney raised her hand? Uh, toward you and Miss Frazier. I was more concerned about my fiance getting hit than me getting hit. Okay, well, she's in nursing know. school. Go ahead, sorry. Go ahead. She's in nursing school. She goes to the hospital. She has clinicals. And the last thing she needed to do was show up to school or clinic with a huge scratch on her face or a black eye or, or a busted nose. I was more concerned with her safety than my safety. Is that why you pushed Miss Edney away? Yes. To ensure that it didn't get any more violent than it already had. Objection, Your Honor. Leading. Uh, sustained. At any point in time, did you move toward her in the direction of Miss Adney prior to her moving toward you? No, we were maybe one to two feet inside uh, Dr. Gibbons' patio. We did not make it any further inside the patio. Okay. I have nothing further. Okay. Ms. McGloss? You're your Honor, can I be made as a co-host so that I can show this witness an exhibit? Sure, you can be just like you. You get the same privileges. Thank you, Your Honor. Do we need Madam uh, Clerk to assist us, Judge? You may have to, so let me see what Madam Clerk is. Hold on one second. I'm here, you. and I okay. just did it. She's co-host. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mr. Byrne, to be clear, it's your sworn testimony you never hit. Mrs. Edney. I pushed Mrs. Edney. I didn't ask you that. I said you never hit Mrs. Edney. I have never hit a woman in my life, including Miss Edney. Never. Okay. I do not. I will not hit a woman. No, but you have been arrested for criminal damage. Objection, Your Honor. Objection. She, for... she, now what? Just stop, Miss McCause. You heard the word. Miss McCall, again. that's objection. Judge, what okay. she's about to try to introduce, just so you're aware, Your Honor, is a previous arrest from 2020 where my client was summarily, the case was dismissed entirely. We went through this in the TPO, Judge, dismissed entirely. And she actually, at that hearing, tried to introduce nothing other than an indictment. And luckily for all of us, I had the part that said no process on that indictment. So I'd object to this. It's not relevant. Ms. McLaughlin, you know better. You can't bring that in. If this is a, if this is a case that has not been uh, properly resolved, you know you cannot bring that in. Your Honor, except for the fact that Mr. Byrne has opened the door. It's dismissed. To, to, no, it, it is not, Judge. He just said. I now, she's li now she's lying, Your Judge. Honor, Your Honor, if I may, Mr. Spiceman, stop in her. Oh, don't call Mr. me a liar, Mr. Spiceman. Don't listen, call me a liar, Mr. Hey, listen, Spiceman. there's no name calling. And uh, Don't listen, do it. What's going to happen? This is what's going to happen. For both parties you know you guys are just dangerously close you know for us just going to terminate this complete hearing and um you know and this is not this is not the spirit of what we are here for as 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 especially as litigants and and as attorneys so i want you guys to keep your decorum when you're in this courtroom okay all right now go ahead miss mccall Mr. your McCall. honor to respond to the objection mr Byrne opened the door when he said, I'm not that kind of person, I've never hit a woman, he has put his character at issue in this case. Well, Ms. McLaws, my question to you is that, was the case dismissed? The only thing, and this is what happened at the last hearing, I've been unable to determine that it was ever closed. We have well, the indictment. Judge, okay. I sent the court a certified copy that showed yeah. that it had no cross written over yeah. it. And Ms. Well, that's bad. That's bad. If you want to, uh, it's it's hard enough. You 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 want to have a conviction or nothing or nothing at all if you're trying this this nonsense. Because saw it and now she's representing to the court that she doesn't know. That is not truthful, Judge. Yeah, I'm, it I'm is not gonna, truthful. I'm not going to allow it, Mr. Gloss. Okay. 
All right, Your Honor. Thank you. Now, Mr. Byrne, um, you filed a stalking petition and swore under oath to certain states. That's that's a sketchy play. Do you Objection, Your Honor, relevant right? a stalking position. It's not relevant to this, Judge. Your Honor, I have him on cross-examination and his credibility and the statement he just but made. Ms. McLaws, if, if, unless you're presenting that out-of-court statement, okay. and do you have that? Yes, Judge, I do. I'm about to share it. Okay. Yes, I do. Mr. Byrne, you uh, filed a stalking petition against Ms. Edney. Isn't that correct? Yes. All right. And you swore under oath that the allegations contained in that stalking petition were true and correct to the best of your knowledge. Isn't that correct? Yes, absolutely. All right. I want to show you your stalking petition. Can you see the screen? Yes. All right. And this is your verification in the uh, the case Jason Byrne versus Brittany Edney, correct? Yes. Yes. All right. You indicate in this stalking petition, I pushed Ms. Edney away to protect my fiance from being struck and was rushed by Ms. Edney's husband, correct? Correct. Interesting, though, you never make a statement that Mrs. Uh, Edney slapped the bourbon bottle. Isn't that correct? J Judge, again, I mean, I would object. This is to impeach his credibility, but this is actually consistent with his statement that he just testified to. He says, I did not hit Miss Edney. I did not threaten Miss Edney. Your Honor, that's that's that not a legal objection. That's a speaking objection. Yeah, the objection is relevance, Judge. She's trying to tender something that doesn't impeach his credibility. It's actually consistent with his statement. So how is this impeachable, Judge? It's absolutely impeachable, Your Honor, because oh, he I'm never let her make... continue to go down that trail. That's what she wants to do. So go ahead and tell me. Keep talking, Ms. McClaw. Thank you. Mr. Byrne, you never put in this stalking petition that Mrs. Edney hit the bourbon bottle, did you? I did not. Are you are you putting that in for exhibit number one? Yes, Your Honor, I am plaintiff's one. Okay. No, that's going to be defendant's one in this situation, I believe. Well, I plaintiff's one, plaintiff's one, I've got plaintiff's one. Yes, sure, I am. Okay. I move to admit plaintiff's one. Make sure you send that copy to, send that to the, uh, yep, that's my thought. to the Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. I'll be happy to. Now, so that we're clear, um, Mr. Byrne, when you arrived at Dr. Given's porch, um, where was Mrs. Uh, Fraser located? By my side. Um, immediately to your right or your left? Immediately to my right. Okay. And how far away uh, were you from Mrs. Edney on the other side of the porch? 10 feet. Okay. Plus or minus. And you believe Dr. Givens to be truthful, don't you? I, I think he's a good man. I think he's a truthful man, yes. Okay. And so when he testified that my client never raised her hand, he was being truthful, wasn't he? That's a question for, for Dr. Givens. I cannot answer what his state of mind is. Okay. And Dr. Givens didn't testify that he ever observed my client hitting a bourbon bottle in your hand, did he? He did not mention that, no. Now, which uh, hand did my client raise, according to you? She raised her, she was standing this way, we were standing that way. She raised her right hand to us. Okay, and she raised it in the air? Did she actually attempt to hit you? I pushed her away before she had an opportunity to hit me or my fiance. Okay. And so when Steve West testified that you made a statement immediately following the incident that you hit Mrs. Edney because she raised her hand, that was an accurate statement, wasn't it? In the previous hearing, he used the word strike. This time we changed it to hit. 
I think that's relevant too. His words that he used were changing. Do you have the transcript so the court can actually read what Mr. West's testimony was before? Do you have that, sir? I, I'm not an attorney, ma'am, and you know that. That's what I, I didn't ask you that. I said, do you have a copy of the transcript? So we can all read what Mr. West's statements actually were. Does no, it, you know I don't have a copy of the transcript. Okay. So um, whether or not Mr. West said you made the statement strike or hit, you heard Mr. West testimony that you actually admitted to striking or hitting my client. Isn't that true? You heard that. Did I hear him say that? Yes, we all did. Okay. So you think Mr. West is a liar? We are not going down this road again, and you're not going to have me call Mr. West a liar. His interpretation of what I said was that. And I'm telling you that that is not what happened. Okay. If you're going to try to get me to call him a liar, it's not going to happen. You tried this last time, and it didn't work. What do you mean by it didn't work? You questioned me for a good 10 minutes trying to get me to call Dr. Givens a liar. Mm -hmm. You questioned me for another 10 minutes trying to get me to call Mr. West a liar. Mm -hmm. And I am not going to call these men liars. That is for your okay. honor to decide. Right. So if Mr. West's testimony was you made the statement that you hit Mrs. Edney. Yes. It's your testimony. Yes. That's, that, so you're telling this court you never made that statement to Mr. West. If you're asking me if that's what his testimony is, yes, that is his testimony. No, I'm asking you, did you make the statement to Mr. West, I hit Mrs. Edney because she was raising her hand? I didn't hit Miss Edney. I did not make that statement. Okay, so you didn't, you claim you didn't make that statement, okay? I did not hit her and I did not make that statement. Okay. The statement I said was she was coming at us or she was trying to hit us, so I pushed her out of uh -huh. the way. Okay. Now, again, everyone can interpret that differently. This happened two months ago. Now, and when you replay this in your head over and over and over, sometimes people use different words. Okay, Mr. Like Burns, Mr. West did in this hearing. He went from strike to hit. Well, we don't actually have the transcript, so we can actually see what he said before, do we? But you were there and you know it as well as I do. No, sir. We don't have the transcript. So we can actually okay, see what fine. Mr. West testified to. Okay. Right. All right. Now, in uh, Mrs. Uh, Frazier also filed a stalking or a uh, petition against Mrs. Edney. Isn't that correct? Correct. Okay. And Mrs. Frazier had indicated that my client had attempted to hit you. And not Objection, her. Your Honor, what is correct? the relevance to these questions about Ms. Frazier's stalking? Yeah, no. yeah, Ms. McLaws, it's not relevant. Move on, please. So it's your, it's your sworn testimony because I'm confused. How it is that my client was able to bite you on the head? So where were you located on the floor exactly? Miss McLaws, this entire situation confuses me as well. I was being tackled by her husband. Okay. Pinned against the ground, as evident by the abrasions on my head. Now hold on. Her I husband was on top you. of me. Oh, let me finish the question, please. Tackled by her husband, mm -hmm. who was on top of me. Uh huh. Miss Edney was to my right. Okay. With her jaw. How, how far away? Locked onto my head. How far away? Mouth length, within inches. All right. And were you on your stomach or on your back? The bruises on my head show that I was on my back. Okay. So you were on your back and you were actually on top of Ms. Edney. Isn't that correct? That is absolutely incorrect. I see. And where was her husband physically located? On top of me. Okay. Was his uh I don't think Miss Edney's own attorney knows uh <laughs> she's she's listing questions that are not consistent with the Oreo theory here at all. But okay. How was he physically located? Physically you said he was on top, on top of, of you. Well, yes. was he on top of you face to face? Was he on top of you with his back to your face? How was it? He was on top of me 
my chest to his chest, my mm -hmm. face to his face, and our arms tangled up in some way where oh, good I am defending myself and he is thinking that he's defending his wife. But yes, I was on my back and he was on top of me face to face. All right. And where were you located exactly in on the porch when all this was happening? Towards the front of the porch or the back of the porch? We only made it into the porch about two feet before we okay. were, before the altercation happened. Okay, but I asked you where you were physically when you were on the ground. On the porch in the corner. Okay. Were you in the corner closer to where Mrs. Edney was or where? The corner was where Miss Edney was. Okay. Because remember, she came to us as Dr. Gibbons, David. Right. And so at that point, Dr. Gibbons was actually in between you and Mrs. Edney, correct? That is his account of what happened. No. It's true, isn't it, that Dr. Edney was in between you and Mrs. Or Dr. Gibbons was between you and Ms. Edney, right? That is your client's and your witness's interpretation of the events. So when you arrived on the porch, Dr. Gibbons would have been to your left, correct? Correct. And you said, and Mrs. Like and Mrs. Edney would also have been to your left, correct? Incorrect. She was ahead of us. Facing Straight you? On. Straight on. Okay. And Dr. Givens, you said it's your testimony, isn't it? He stood up and shook your hand, right? Yes. And so when he stood up, he would have been between physically between where you were standing and where Ms. Edney was. Isn't that right? People move. That's not correct. We said hi. Gave a hug That's and on the agenda, then back to standing. Okay. There was so, no reason for everyone to be up in arms. There was no reason for anyone to be hostile. There's no reason to think anything was going to happen. So we Mr. stepped Mr. away. Burns, listen to the question. So you're on the porch. Yep. Dr. Yes. Givens is to your left. So when he stood up, he was physically between you and Mrs. Edney. Isn't that correct? That's not correct. Okay. And he actually turned to face you when he was talking to you, didn't he? Yes. Okay. And that would have meant his back would have been to Mrs. Edney, right? I don't think we've established where Mrs. Edney was. She was sitting was in a chair. Was he in between us? Okay, Mr. Was Burns, it a straight listen. line? No, it wasn't a straight line. Okay. So when Mr. Dr. Given stood up and he turned to no. face you, his back would have been to Mrs. Edney, correct? I can't say. You can't I say. I can't pinpoint it. No, I can't pinpoint exactly okay. where he was. I can't pinpoint exactly where she was. I wasn't looking at her. I don't, when I'm talking to someone, I'm going to talk, look at the person I'm talking to, not, mm -hmm. I think that's just a matter of common courtesy. Right. And so Dr. Givens was facing you, right? At which point? When we were talking to each other? Yes, he was facing me. Yes. Okay. And at what point do you, uh, is it your testimony that he moved? Everybody on the porch moved. At what point did he move? During the altercation, okay. Mr. Givens went inside. Dr. Givens went inside during the altercation? He went inside. He was not there. He was not in between us. Who That's was the between first us time you've said that, was though, Mr. Right? Please let me finish. Thank you. Uh -huh. Who was in between us was Mr. Wang, Mrs. Edney's husband. He is the one that tackled me. Not Mr. Givens, Dr. Givens, not Mr. West, not our other neighbor, Judge. Judd. So it's your sworn Mrs. testimony Mrs. Edney's today. husband, Mr. Wang, tackled me at this point. Dr. Gibbons went up, he went inside to get the two other gentlemen to break up this wrestling match. Hold on. I was tackled by Wang and then he went inside. It was only after you were on the floor 
that you contend Dr. Givens got up and went inside, correct? I don't think that's what I said. So I remember one of the last things I remember seeing before I was tackled mm -hmm. was Mr. Givens, Dr. Givens going inside to get the other mm -hmm. gentleman to break up this fight that was about to ensue. And that interesting. This is the first time you've testified to that, isn't it? This is the first time that I've spoken during this entire hearing. During this hearing, but you testified at the stalking petition. You never said that during that hearing, did you? Do you have the transcript? The stalking petition that you lost? Oops. Oh, yeah. We've ordered them. We'll be happy to continue or ask the court to reserve so the answer. No, so so we no. can read it. Arguing. Judge, I'd object. Do you Listen. have them? Listen, we need to move on. Listen, this is, um, we're getting dangerously close to the time for me to shut this down. And we're walking. So y'all need to go ahead and move on. Okay. <laughs> But Mr. Byrne, you never testified that Dr. Givens wasn't present on the porch during We're almost there. It's only it's only four more hours. The altercation at any point in time at any hearing, have you? This is the first time that I'm being that I'm having the ability to speak in this hearing. I didn't ask you about this hearing. I said that's the first time you've testified under oath that Dr. Givens wasn't present during the altercation. Isn't that correct? Do you have the transcripts? No, sir. I'm asking you about what you recall. This is the first time you are testifying that Dr. Givens wasn't present during the entire altercation. Isn't that correct? Ms. McLaws, as you know, Your Honor, if you that was a six and a half hour hearing. Question. Can I remember everything I said? No, I can't remember everything I said. Yes or no? Okay. It's yes or no. I can't recall, Your Honor. Burn, I don't yes know. Okay. Or I don't remember. It's your decision. Is he, he can't I, I don't know, Your Honor. Move on to the next question. That's all I have, Your Honor. Okay. He can't recall. All right. All right. Another Mrs. question, Mr. McCaws? I'm I'm, I'm addressing the court, not oh, you, Mr. Okay. Spicer. Sorry, I didn't know if you were done. Judge, I got nothing further for Mr. Uh, Burn. More testimony? I mean, it, it would be Ms. Frazier, Judge. I mean, again, we we're, I mean, if you want to hear it, that's fine. Uh, I mean, her, her, is her testimony going to be cumulative of what Mr. Burns testified to? I mean, she has a private warrant after we get Miss Eddie. Yeah. Well, I don't, cool. don't want to put it up, Judge, but what else can I do? Well, you got about you got about 20 minutes. All right, Judge. <laughs> I'm going to make it 10. All right. Ms. Frazier, you're sworn. I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Okay. Okay. All right. Fair to say you've always had a healthy and reasonable relationship with Miss Edney? Objection, Your Honor. Relevance. It, this is, you got to be kidding me, Ms. McCaws. I just listen, have listen, Ms. McCall, go ahead, Mr. Smith, please. Thank you, you had a healthy and Objection fair. Objection over If you had a healthy and amicable relationship with Ms. Edney. Um, for the most part, yes, up until the, the falling out of our friendship and why we decided to stop talking to her is because of how she verbalizes and she just says really inappropriate things but for the most part yes we traveled and had a healthy relationship leading up to the two events okay leading up to september 23rd had you seen her over the year prior to that no okay um did you and jason know that miss edney would be at dr gibbon's house no all right had you known would you have gone um no, I don't think so. It was my first time actually. Um, Rod, uh, Rod and his wife continuously have tried to invite us over no, numerous times. And I felt bad because I am a nursing student. Jason works long shifts. Objection, Your Honor. This is far hey, outside listen. the scope of the question. Go, go ahead and please just direct to the question. I got you, Miss uh, uh, Frazier. Yeah, I mean, things. long story short, I, I don't think we would have gone over there. Okay. If we knew Peter and Brittany were there. All right. When you arrived, can you tell me what happened? Um, when we arrived, uh, we went to their porch. We heard the TV on and then proceeded to um, say hi to Rod. Um, we gave him a hug and Jason and Rod shook hands while I gave him a hug. And then I stood back and proceeded to stand right next to Jason and um, Jason had asked 
Jason proceeded to talk to Rod about the bottle of bourbon that he um, brought over just for like a, a housewarming kind of welcome gift. Um, Jason acknowledged Peter and Brittany and Peter replied, um, hey, or hi, softly. And Brittany continued to ignore Jason. Um, she was on her phone, I think, texting or something. Um, and then, um, oh, Jason decided to ask Rod to open up the bottle of bourbon um, and have a drink. And then Jason had asked Peter and Brittany if they would like a drink as well. Um, Peter quietly said no. Brittany ignored. And then Jason had made a comment. Um, Jason had made a comment like, you don't have to ignore me. You can at least acknowledge the question in so many words. And that's when Brittany um, began to get hostile and said that um she doesn't have to talk to jason because of the falling out that we had had um and then um oh and then i had talked to rod and i said oh do you see that's how she talks to us and that's the whole reason why we're not friends with her is how she talks to she treats us horrible and so i had never even talked to Brittany or peter and i turned over and faced rod and i said this is this is how she talks to us. And then that's when she proceeded um, to call me a bitch. And then she headed over my way towards Jason and I. She okay, then began you, to stand. When I'm sorry. She called, sorry, when, when she called you a bitch, was she sitting or standing? Um, she, I believe, said she called me a bitch and stood up and then proceeded to walk towards Jason and I. Okay, and how would you um, describe the pace that she walked at you? Was it slow, fast? Um, fast, given the fact that the whole thing happened within 30 to 40 seconds, so super fast and quick. Okay, at any point in time, did she um, cause you to feel reasonable apprehension that she was going to hurt you? Yeah, she raised her hand. First, she called me a bitch, raced over here where Jason and I were standing. And if she wanted nothing to do with us, why would she even come over to address anything so yeah i did feel a little taken back that she was quickly quickly walking towards my way um i began to just stand there i'm in nursing school i'm not going to get involved in any drama regardless so i just honestly stood there next to jason and jason then verbalized to Brittany, you know don't you dare call my fiance a bitch and then that's when Brittany Brittany proceeded i can call her whatever i want to i want to call her and then began to slap the bottle down of when Jason had the bottle up, he was, he had the bottle up, she began to slap it down. Jason said, don't you step in further. And then Brittany began to do so. And then that's when she raised her hand and that's when Jason had pushed her. And that's when the whole chaos started. When you, when she raised your hand, what, what did you immediately think was going to happen? Um, well, first, I was wondering who she was going to hit. I mean, I'm standing right next to Jason. She, J I am, did not verbalize anything with her from me entering this whole um, situation. Jason's the one that verbalized something to Rod. Um, I didn't know who she was going to hit, but I knew some she was going to do something because she had headed over quickly after she had verbalized and called me a bitch, which I think is an inappropriate word. Was it possible from your perspective she was going to hit you? Yeah. Was her hand close to or headed in the direction of your body? Um, well, she had it up, and that's assault. Okay. I mean, did I know it was going to point towards me or Jason? No. Okay. And um, did Jason's response of pushing her, um, from your perspective, did that stop her from striking you or Jason? No, it did not stop her. She still, she was still able to do it. Well, no, I mean, in self-defense, he had pushed her. Um, right? Did that stop her I from mean, striking you? Is that that's what I'm asking? Yeah. Is pushing you? Yes, Jason stopped the incident from happening because he had pushed her. If he had didn't, if he didn't, 
I couldn't have told you what would have happened. Okay. I probably you, would have hit one of us. At any point in time, did you see uh, Jason hit her or punch her? No. Did he hit her with a bottle with a bourbon bottle? No. And after he pushed her, um, who first? Who responded first? Uh, Brittany. Okay. And then after Brittany responded, did anyone else jump in? Uh, Peter. Okay. What did Peter do? Uh, Peter began to attack Jason. Okay. And and were you were you the only person that was kind of standing up, looking over everyone during this incident? Yes. Like, what was your vantage point? I mean, like, what could you see uh, or not? Everything. Okay. <laughs> so how view. would you describe the 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 I guess the preceding fighting and the wrestling that occurred? Um, that Brittany and Brittany and Peter were on each side of Jason, and Jason was actually in the middle. If um, Brittany was able to actually bite the, on top of Jason's head, not on the back, if Jason was on top of her, she would have only been able to bit the back of the head. In the photo, it's on top. She was curled over on the side of Jason, and that's how she was able to lock jaw on top of his head and proceed to bite. And if she was out of breath, she would have been able to bite. Objection, Your Honor. I think she's going far beyond what she's not been qualified as an expert witness. She's not testifying about what she observed. Now she's drawing conclusions. She's not qualified to make. Did Did you happen to um, hear that she's in nursing school? I was the uh, only Nicole. one. Your Honor. Not, Nicole, not your pipe. Okay. So she testified to what she saw. She based it on personal experience. I think it's late. Um, I proceeded Nicole, to see. Stop. Nicole, Ms. Nicole, Ms. Nicole. Ms. Frazier, you, there's an objection. You have to be quiet, okay? Yeah, we got to figure this out. So, right. Judge, she's testifying to what she saw. All right, but she can testify to what she saw, but she can't draw conclusions. Fair enough, Ms. Frazier. I need you to testify what she saw. Did you see Mr. Byrne choking Mr. Wang? No. <laughs> was it feasible based on the position he was in that he could have choked him? I got nothing. I I don't think how I don't know how that would be possible based on the positions. Okay. Um and was there was he at any point in time trying to injure or choke or hold down Miss Edney? No, I think he was trying to trying to wing Peter off of him. Okay. And is that when he was bit? Yes, yeah, so when Peter was on top of Jason and trying to hold him down, um, that's when Brittany bit Jason on his head. And you witnessed that? You saw her bite him? Yes. Okay. That image will forever be in my mind. Um, one second, Judge. I think I'm done. Nothing further, Judge. All right, thank you. Ms. McCall? Any, Ms. Any Frazier, questions? I'm sorry, Your Honor. I didn't Go mean ahead. to interrupt you. No, so you got any questions? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Ms. Frazier, you're engaged to be married to Jason Byrne, correct? Yeah, I love him. He's a great person. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here right now. Do great people uh, go to their neighbor's door and try to break Objection, it down? Objection, Your Honor. This is now trying to, she's Listen. trying to break up. Prior arrest again. She's she knows opening better. the door. She knows better. Well, she's listen, opened listen. the door, Your Honor. There she has this, opened the this door. This is I wanted to focus on this incident, okay? Yes, Your Honor. Um, you filed a stalking petition against Ms. Edney as well, didn't you? Correct. And never one time in your stalking petition do you allege that Mrs. Edney hit the bourbon bottle, did you? I don't think out of the entire situation, that was like the key evidence of why I filed. It's I not filed. what I asked you, ma'am. You didn't allege in your verified petition. Yes or no question, Ms. Frazier. Did you? Um, no. No. I mean, that's dumb. She wouldn't need to. 
she's talking about actions with respect to her, not somebody else. Dr. Givens was on the porch the entire time that the incident happened, wasn't he? No. When do you contend that he left the porch? He left the porch when Peter and Brittany, or Peter and Jason began to um, fight each other and he went to go inside and tell Judd and the other man, I don't even know his name, um, it's hard to stomach that some, I didn't hear what was said inside, but I know he left the room, left the porch to go inside. And that's when Judd and the other man began to break Peter and Jason apart. You testified at the stalking petition hearing, correct? Correct. You never once told the court in that hearing that Dr. Givens had left the altercation. Isn't that true? Um, <laughs> I think your no. questions at that time were really not it's a yes or no, ma'am. Did, did you testify at all during that hearing that Dr. Givens had left the porch? Yes or no, ma'am? I'm not sure. I mean, uh, show me the evidence that I did or did not. I'm not sure. Okay. That was a seven hour TPO. So you can't recall whether or not you told the court in the TPA or the stalking petition that Dr. Givens had left the porch. You can't recall that. Um, I'm pretty sure if I'm saying that he left the porch, then I would have mentioned it. Okay. That's all I have, Your Honor. Two, two right. follow-up questions and I'm done, Judge. Okay. Uh, Ms. Frazier, did Ms. McCause ever specifically asked you during that TPO hearing where Dr. Gibbons was? Not at all. Okay, number two, do you recall how long that TPO hearing lasted? Yeah, seven hours. Nothing further. Six or seven. Wait, I have a follow-up question. This hearing is actually still going. Dr. Gibbons actually testified at that stalking petition that he was present the entire time, just like he did today. You heard that testimony, didn't you? Um, but yeah, I, yeah, I heard what he had said. You heard what he said during that stalking, uh, petition, his testimony? No, I'm talking about, I heard what he had said today. Okay. I didn't get to hear what he had said during the TPO because I was in a different room. I only got called upon when I was supposed to speak. Right. That's all I have. All right. Nothing further, Judge. All right, no other questions? No uh, other no witnesses, no other no questions. No witnesses, no evidence. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this under advisement. <laughs> And I will be issuing something in the next week or so. Your okay. Honor, is it is it possible while you're you're taking an under advisement if we get the transcript of that hearing that I can submit that as an exhibit? Um, yeah, would, is it possible as I'm taking it under advisement that you could shut your hole? Object. That's entirely inappropriate. The case is closed. She didn't bring it to this hearing. She cannot. Yeah, I'm not gonna know. I'm sorry, Ms. McLaughlin. No, you can't do that. Okay. Okay, Thank Your you Honor, I thought I'd ask because- I know. You know. Judge, thanks for your yeah. patience. Can we all yeah, be excused this way? We gather that. <laughs> you know how, that though, don't how, you, Judge? How do you know? How do you know? How, how do you think I feel? <laughs> like, I know, Judge, I know. I apologize, but I appreciate it. Oh, no, thanks. you're good. Listen, this is, part of, this is part of what I do, okay? I want to make sure everybody had an opportunity. But- Your Honor, uh, may, may I ask one question, please? Yes. Um, and I know it's late and, and I don't want to uh, be a will in the cog, but my client does have a right to close. Can we do that by letter brief? Judge, I would object to any letter brief. This is, I mean, unbelievable. I mean, let, me, let, let me just say this. If you want to submit a letter brief, Ms. McLaws, you can, but I'm just going to let you know I'm going to be ruling on it very soon. Yes, okay? sir. I will get that to you um, tomorrow. Okay. Uh, if that's the case, then let's just put a five-minute closing on the record and be done with it. I mean, I thought that we have to have to go brief this. I mean, I mean, <laughs> listen, you know, Mrs. Spitzman, you've you've been you've been practicing the law long enough to know that there have been time opportunities where people submitted extra briefs after after hearings, what have you. So this is not this is not anything different. Okay. Understood, Judge. Thank yeah. you. Honor, right, thank may you. I may I just ask where I would submit that to? Uh, I I don't want to take too much time. Oh no, you can submit it to Miss um, Ross. Uh, you have failed. You have failed miserably. You've taken way too much time. You have lost and you've lost miserably. And now you want to write uh, uh, 
now you want to submit more stuff in writing, primarily to annoy Justin Spiesman, not because you have any hope of getting anywhere. Nobody believes your client. It's over. Bye bye. Uh, could you get, put your um, email address in there, please? <laughs> yeah, I'll put I'm the sorry. um, I'll put the or magic report. report. Magic report. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'll send it. Hell, I don't know. Maybe she wins. <laughs> she wouldn't if I was judge. To you in chat. Give me one second. She's going to send it to you in chat. Thanks, Judge. Have a good evening. All right. Happy thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Honor. You're welcome. Well, there you have it. There you have it. How long is this thing? We're over three hours now. We're over three hours. I skipped part of it. Uh, th there's a small portion that was missing, but not very much. And, and probably a good 40 per 40, 50 percent of it was at 1.25 speed. We're still over three hours. But I mean, come on. When I did this, I, what, what drew me to it was really the attorneys going at each other. I hadn't seen, I didn't even like look at the beginning. I didn't know that, <laughs> I didn't know we'd have these name debacles and, and the, the Oreo dog pile. And I, I mean, like those are all bonuses along the way. Those are all bonuses. And for those of you who are worried about it, don't worry about it. Flamingo number three is going to get herself a good dinner. But she did go in the other room. She she skated her little butt off today, and she's passed out right now having a nap. She's So so don't worry. She didn't hear it. She doesn't know. She's just going to get up from a nap and have a nice dinner. Thank you all for coming out. I really appreciate it. That was lots of fun. I will see you all soon.